Hey everybody, welcome to the Expedition One podcast. I have a special guest today. His name is Kid Richmond. Kid Richmond is a friend of mine. He is also a stunt man uh, who does used to do a lot of stunt stuff and stunt driving. And he's also an off-road enthusiast. So we're gonna talk about well, off-road overlanding camping, photography, lots of stuff, right? Yeah. Something like that? Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. We'll get into it. <laughs> we'll get into it. Nice. How's everything going? It's going good. Yeah. Yeah. Got stuck the other day trying to find some wild horses. That was, uh, did you see that? I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. I got stuck uh, in the middle of a prairie in about two feet of snow. And, nice. Uh, yeah. It was, it was miserable. It was 17 <laughs> degrees, 35 mile an hour winds. Uh, Where were you at? Uh, so I was out um, a, a little bit past Dugway. Okay. Um, and so there's, there's a couple uh herds of horse i think there's three herds of horses out there wild horses truly wild horses mm -hmm. and uh i'd been out there and I'd, I'd seen them before and i got some good photographs so i was trying to go back and you, i couldn't see the the actual trail once mm -hmm. i got off the pony express trail there's another trail that leads you to the one point of the mountain where they're at and uh yeah i came off the trail because i was kind of driving blind mm -hmm. and uh punched through the snowpack and i was you know, there's nothing to anchor to. <laughs> <laughs> so did you have, okay, so let's talk this real quick. What are you driving these days? Uh, so right now um, for, for off-roading, I'm in a 2021 uh, Gecko Green. Mm -hmm. I never thought I'd have a super bright green vehicle. Uh, Jeep Wrangler 4XE. Okay. Um, so it's, it's pretty much stock. You know, I, I did a Rhino rack on top and I've got uh, my Max Tracks got eight, eight boards sitting on top of that. Mm -hmm. Um, I got a winch in front, did a Warren Xeon, uh, platinum, mm -hmm. uh, 10S, um, went, went, you know, clutchless, you know, just because, you know, when you're by yourself a lot, it's just, uh, it's, it's a lot better to be able to be clutchless uh -huh. and engage and disengage and hook up how you need. Um, but that's, that's my go-to, which I am, uh, actively looking at getting rid of. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. So let's, let's talk about when you and I first met, you were rolling, uh, in a Tundra. Yeah. I was, I was in a mostly stock Tundra, mm -hmm. uh, when we first met, um, it was a 2008 Tundra crew cab. Uh, I can't remember the trims on those a bit limited or whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, Red rock interior, you know, I loved it. You know, I came out here from Virginia. Mm -hmm. um, there's not a lot of public land out there, so pretty no, much. No, there's not. Yeah, you know, it's weird. It, Utah's chock full of it. Oh, do you, but... Utah is basically just you know, just pull off the highway, start shooting, start doing donuts, whatever you want to do. <laughs> um, I mean, it's it's truly an outdoor playground. But um, yeah, so so I moved onto a mountain. Um, recovery was a big thing, and. Uh, being able to get off road comfortably was another big thing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I kind of ran the gamut on all these different suspensions and stuff and, um, just kind of opened up, you know, my eyes to like, Oh wow. You, you don't have to like destroy a bone stock vehicle off road. Cause that's kind of like what I was doing. Mm -hmm. It was like, I would just go and hammer anything. I mean, I'd, I'd yeah. take a bone stock Kia Sorenta and just destroy it on like five mile pass or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, whatever <laughs> you can, you can off road anything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, we first met at that, had that Tundra and then, uh, I needed more power, you know, cause I got a little bit of that Ricky Bobby mm -hmm. in me. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I did the supercharger upgrade, uh, hooked up with you, got right. some bumpers, uh, front and rear, um, did a rack, and uh man that, that thing just it could charge through everything yeah it was great yeah it was pretty gnarly it was a cool yeah. truck yeah was, i mean you beat the hell out of it too i i mean you used it i'll put it that way you used it yeah i i definitely used it you know i i, I uh i kept mark miller toyota in business with that <laughs> thing um because anything that went wrong with it you know I, I took it in and and had it fixed you know anything that you know was within my capabilities i would work on you know um, and then, you know, I was like, it's, it's time for something else. Mm -hmm. um, you had a lot of miles on that thing. I mean, you had used it. Didn't yeah. you have like, like 200,000 miles or more? Yeah. yeah. I, I sold that thing with 
I want to say it had 225,000 yeah. miles on it or something, something like, like that. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It was high mild. And yeah. It was, <laughs> yeah. But you, it you still know, ran great though. Oh, it, it, it ran like a top. And the, you know, the cool thing was when I did the supercharger at the time, um, Toyota was like, hey, look, you know, you get it installed here, the dealer, we give you another 50,000 mile warranty on your engine. Oh, wow. So for, nice. 10, for 10 grand, um, they did the install got the extended warranty uh, on the engine, covered everything, um, and never really had any problems other than just wearing out suspension components. Um, but that that was that was kind of my, my favorite vehicle, uh, just in terms of off-roading. And I had a bed, so I could throw stuff in there. Mm -hmm. um, I will say the one, the one advantage to having a truck off-road, uh, when you get stuck, if you use traction boards, yeah. You just throw them in the bed and keep going, right? And get stuck again, right? <laughs> and pull them out, like with the with the jeeps and everything. You got to strap them to a rack and all that, and, and it's nice. But um, like the, just two days ago, as I learned, you know, it's like, yeah, I got stuck. I got unstuck on solid ground, and yeah. I got stuck thirty seconds later pulling back up. <laughs> so, so it's like I had to, you know, I had to pull all the traction boards and everything back off. Mm -hmm. was, you know, it's like this whole process, right? Like mm -hmm. you get everything ready to go, boom, then you get stuck again. Um, but yeah, I've, I've learned, you know, through the course of, uh, you know, going out adventuring. Because my, my main thing is I like to get into spots that most people don't go to and I want to take pretty pictures. Mm -hmm. That's, that's kind of like my whole drive, right? Yeah. It's like my camera is, you know, the, the goal is to get my camera into somewhere that I can look through and you know, see things that most people probably wouldn't have seen. Mm -hmm. And so I've kind of got like these checklists now and, and it's, it's, it's starting to get more dialed in and like mm. in terms of what I need for an off-road vehicle. Mm. Um, cause I went from the, the Tundra to a Raptor, 20, right. 2018 Leadfoot gray Raptor. Raptors are fun. Yeah. But um, those motors are not yeah so what i what the I, amount of people i know that have blown those motors is pretty crazy yeah i <laughs> i ended up with a lemon um but even then you know i i guess that's the thing is like when you get into off-roading and and you start to learn about all the different uh possibilities that you could have with a vehicle you start mm -hmm. to find out that a lot of these you know uh, off-road you know vehicles like the raptor jeeps mm -hmm. all of those things they aren't very well engineered. And I say that from the standpoint of like, okay, the Raptor I got was a Gen 2. Yeah. Leaf's in the rear. So leaf, leaf spring suspension, you know. It's kind of outdated for something like that. Yeah. You know, Ram has been doing uh, coils, coils for yeah. quite a while. Um, and I ended up getting rid of the the Tundra, jumped into a, or no, no, the Raptor jumped into a Tundra, then jumped into a Ram. Right. Then jumped into a Jeep, another Jeep. Um, but there's just so many things that like you start to look at like on the Raptor and you go, if you were to go like 15 miles an hour down a, a fire lane flat mm -hmm. and it was washboarded, 15 miles of rear end would start to skip out on you. Mm. And it's cause they're, you know, the engineers at, at Ford are talking with engineers at Fox and they're like, well, I mean, it's a truck. Someone's going to throw plywood, whatever, a lot of weight in the bed. Mm -hmm. So it's a bed that's made to carry weight. Right. At the end of the day. So if you start off-roading without waiting there, um, you're going to notice it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to be like super uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Um, so, so, so yeah, I've got this checklist um, and I've got to have, got to have comfort. Mm -hmm. like, I think that's number one now. Yeah. Comfort, the older you get, the more comfort matters for yeah. some reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it, it, it's you, you know it's like if, if anyone's ever gotten a chance to sit in like a, a a carbon fiber bucket seat you know yeah at a young age it's cool you're it's like cool. oh man this is like this is awesome right mm -hmm. you feel like you're in a race car no matter what what it is you know um i mean the seat could just be sitting on the floor and you sit in and you're like this is just you know yeah, it's awesome yeah it primes your senses <laughs> for feeling like you're gonna do some shit yeah. um but then it's like you look at everything and you go, okay, I need comfort. I need uh, cargo. So I got to have mm -hmm. room for the cargo. Mm -hmm. And then you, you start looking at things like, okay, I got to have the clearance, right? So, yep, clearance matters. Yeah. Um, I mean, because otherwise you could hop in something like a, a 
you know, Toyota RAV4 or something. Oh, or, yeah. I mean, Subaru. Yeah, right? Subaru. Yeah. I mean, in, in you know, people can murder them out and put enough goop on them, racks, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, they look cool. Yeah. Right? Like you can... like you can have a little fun in them, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like uh, I used to... I used to vehicle shop and, and, and look at things like, oh, it's gotta, it's gotta look cool. And then I kind of realized you can make anything look cool. And you, you kind of taught me that because, mm -hmm. um, you know, you design your bumpers to be aesthetically pleasing, but also mm -hmm. kind of tease out some more of those elements that the engineers might have left on the table. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so you can make anything look cool. So I don't even really consider, you know, how something looks when I buy something now, Yeah. other than maybe color. Um, but yeah, you gotta have the clearance, gotta have the comfort and, uh, and I've got to more about function. Yeah. I gotta have the car going. So it's, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's function. Um, and if you don't have that, you're not going to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Then, Comfort com comfort is a point of function, right? It, totally. It totally is. Yeah. And, and a lot of that's creature comforts, right? You know, yeah. and, and let's be honest, you, you get in these, like, uh, these Facebook groups and stuff and and uh you start mentioning things like oh yeah i want to have my blind spot you know monitoring and you mm -hmm. know i like my forward trail camera stuff like that and then you get the guys are just like you know what's wrong with you just <laughs> <laughs> just get out of your jeep and look in front of you you don't need a forward facing you know camera mm -hmm. and you're like you know that stuff it, it comes in handy a lot of times mm -hmm. um so i think a lot of times the more of that i just call it goop you know yeah the more of that goop that you can pack into a vehicle, usually, may, yeah, usually the better. I mean, we can say, yeah, it's it's more things that can go wrong. It is to sure. a degree. I yeah. mean, what's interesting is so like on a lot of these, from the standpoint of designing bumpers and stuff, like the new thing is, um, so I like the Jeeps because I think Jeep actually designed the Jeep knowing that there was healthy aftermarket. The guys are going to be putting bumpers on this and stuff like that. And Ford did the same thing with the Bronco for the most part. Okay. Where they, they put the sensors in locations. So like your blind spot monitors and stuff like that, which isn't so much a big help off-road, but it's a help nonetheless, right? Yeah. They, they are helpful. They are useful, right? And they put them in places, um, where you don't have to do crazy modifications. The new Tundra, which you know, I pulled out and parked out there. That thing was one of the biggest design challenges I've ever had, making it so all the sensors worked, all the blind spot monitors, because they're all in the bumper, and then also making it so our dual swing tire carrier would work at the same time. Yeah, It was a total engineering feat. I've It's the only vehicle I've been able to do that on and, and still make it functional without making stuff extremely bulky or awkward or, or heavy, uh, that kind of thing. So, yeah, I mean, the amount of additions that they're doing with sensors, cameras, cameras are a big deal. deal. I, I'm, I'm with you on the camera's usefulness because, okay, you don't know that it's useful until you're using it, yeah. right? And then you're like, oh, this is nice. Yeah. This is really nice that I can see what's right there rather than having to get out of the car and check. Oh, it's you know like, what I mean? It's like power steering, you know? I'm, I'm sure when power oh, yeah. steering first came out, you had all these, you know, super beefed up dudes. Like, oh, you freaking pussy. <laughs> Crank the wheel. <laughs> you know, it's like, like yeah, I mean, uh, you, you know, so everyone loves to just kind of crap on, you know, w whatever comes out that's kind of new. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. And I, I've learned to uh, kind of adopt those things mm -hmm. and look at, you know, how I can incorporate or use it. Mm -hmm. Um and at the same time, it's like, well, if, I, if it's a feature that I, that, that doesn't interfere that I don't need and, you know, I can just not use it. Yeah. Right. Um, but you know, still I'm, I'm one of those people where I, I don't have a side by side. So I look at setting up my, my off-road vehicles, uh, to always kind of retain that comfort, right? Like I still have right. to have that creature comfort. Like I'm still going to pull into the grocery store parking lot and I don't want to hit anyone back and out. So, right. you know, people detection. I mean, mm -hmm. that, that's something that people don't really talk about is like, you know, in your off-road vehicle, it's like, well, you're still driving it down the road yeah. to get to where you want to go off-road. And that's, yep. that's my thing is I want to be able to pack all my camera gear in. Um, I want to have my co-pilot, my, my buddy Watson, my dog. Right. <laughs> uh, I want to have him comfortable, which he absolutely hates off-roading. It's Does he? stressful. Uh -huh. Um, so I, but I still, you know, I want to be able to pull up to the coffee shop or grocery store or whatever. Um, I want to be able to drive 80, 
miles an hour down the interstate comfortably. Yeah. Um, but out here, you know, in Utah, people don't realize like we have speed limits that are 80, you know, oh, yeah. you, 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 oh, yeah. you head out towards Wendover, um, get into the salt flats. And so you want to be able to drive down the road comfortably. And that, that's kind of like one of the downsides of a Jeep is, you know, you're, <laughs> even mm-hmm. you in a hold on yeah even in a stock jeep stock tires you're still going man what's what's going on here right mm-hmm. um but you know you still live your day-to-day life and you know maybe if you're you're working like a, a nine to five and and you are taking like designated times off to go adventure then you can have a different setup but for me like every day i'm going out kind of finding somewhere to go right. And I don't know exactly where I'm going to end up uh, or what I'm going to encounter. So I want to be ready for the road, but I want to be ready for the trail. Um, and so that's why I've kind of learned to leave. Well, it's happened since I've got the Jeep. Um, where I've learned to just leave the vehicles just kind of stock. Yeah. Like, just don't dick with anything, you know. Mm-hmm. Don't start screwing with the suspension to, to a degree. Like, I mean, if you upgrade to some, you know, good Falcon shocks or something like that. Right. You know, go for it. But like overall, the Rubicon's checked a lot of boxes in terms of, capability um being able to get me where i want being able to go down the road moderately comfortable yeah i say moderately comfortable because like it's still nervous it's loud you know Mm -hmm. i've got a hard top Mm -hmm. but it's still like at 80 miles an hour with a little bit of a crosswind Mm -hmm. you're you're just like man i just cannot relax yeah no you can't particularly with cross i mean you said it right there the jeeps i don't know why it is um but the jeeps have never been good in crosswind yeah. It's just never a good situation. They've improved them having, I've, I've, I've had like, so I've got that TG out, TJ out there and TJ, JK's jails. I've had the whole gambit and the gladiator gladiator is bar none. My favorite because it is a truck and you do have that bed and it is very easy and useful. You know what I mean? Yeah. Accessibly. So I love, I love the gladiators, but yeah, with what, with what you're saying, as far as crosswinds, I don't know why. It's, yeah, maybe it's the brick shape, but they just do terrible. It's a it's a it's refrigerator. Just, yeah, you're, it's, you're, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. You're, you're pushing yeah. You're, you're pushing a dryer through <laughs> through eighty mile an hour winds, and yeah, you know, I, it's it's one of those things where I I really wish that someone like Jeep would look at it and go, hey, let's let's give people a mix between something like the Rubicon Wrangler and the Jeep Cherokee. Yeah, um, because. I've taken the top off a couple of times, but, uh, I, I mean, y- y'all can see I'm, I'm pretty pasty. <laughs> so I don't, I, I shouldn't take the top off. <laughs> I'm just going to end up like lobster boy. Um, I don't take the doors off. I've got a dog. Um, yeah. and you know, the, the other reality is, you know, I can take all that stuff off, but then I'm allowing all this filth into the vehicle and, you know, my camera body is pretty pricey. I mean, right. I've got a, you know, thirteen thousand hour lens that I shoot on. I mean, that's just one lens out of many. Um, and I, they don't like dirt. No, <laughs> nope. And you know, the other thing is, you can always think, and and photographers will appreciate this. Um, you can always think that when you go to swap a lens off your camera, like, oh, I'll do it inside the vehicle, you know, because it's like there's no outside element or whatever. Yeah. And when the lighting's just right, you can really see how much dust is like circulating inside your vehicle Cause, yeah because because they still put you know carpet and side of vehicles in 2023 for some reason um <laughs> so it holds a lot of that stuff but you you know you take your lens off your camera and you go to put it on and you're looking at it and you're like why is my sensor full of dust mm. and the last thing i want to do is roll around in a vehicle without doors or a top um, and i feel like if jeep gave us an in-between of that ring the rubicon and the jeep cherokee we'd end up with a really good vehicle that would retain that quietness, right? Yeah. Um, I think, have you seen the Jeep? I think it's called the Recon. Have you seen that? Yeah. The. So I'm the, very curious to see what that it ends the, up being. Yeah, the EV. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm, I'm really excited for that. I mean, I, I might get one. I don't mm-hmm. know. We'll see. Um, we'll see where charging is at. I mean, we've, we've kind of run the gamut on electric vehicles. I mean, we have a Tesla and we run a Taycan and stuff. Right. Um, but I I think I saw that uh, the range on it is supposed to be fairly decent, something like three hundred some mm-hmm. miles or whatever. But that's kind of the 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 downfall of electric is I, so I got stuck 
And I, so I, I left out of Park City and go to Dugway. That's uh, almost a two hour trip for me. Yeah. Um, I don't know of any chargers that are fast chargers that I could have stopped at. Uh, maybe there's one in Tuella. Yeah. Um, so I would have already burned through half of my range. Um, mm -hmm. 17 degree temperatures once I got out there um, and I got stuck. So you got to account for, you know, using some juice mm -hmm. when you're stuck, trying to get unstuck, the, you know, the unforeseeable. Um, and then you got to make it back home. Yeah. <laughs> And that's the, that's kind of the, the issue is, you know, you're looking at range and it's that whole range anxiety thing, mm -hmm. um, which is why I went with that Wrangler 4XE, yeah. which has been great up until recently. Um, yeah. And then now it's just like, I've got a, I've got a, a like a, a super long, like CVS receipt of OBD2 codes. That oh, is, seriously? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't it's have electric tough. mode right now. Um, oh, really? Yeah. So, so. What's up with that? So with the Wrangler 4XE, uh, I've loved it uh, up until about 15,000 miles. Uh, I got a brand new. And then um, 15,000 miles, the steering started acting up. Uh, basically, I had a leak and then fixed a leak. And then uh, with the sector lash, um, you can tighten it all mm -hmm. the way, but you still get that dead spot in the middle, mm -hmm. which which it's totally in the gearbox, right? Like you, yeah. you turn the steering wheel and you're looking at the pitman arm and the pitman arm isn't moving one bit. You know, but you still have that plane yeah. wheel. Then you okay. It's just in the gearbox. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's something in that sector Same shaft. Box. Um, but yeah, the uh, the electric. So it you know it, it uses bypass heating because it's got a combustion engine. And it's also got the electric, uh, you know, motor with the the battery. But in order for all that to work, in in series is you have an electric heater as well, right? So you've got to be able to condition the cabin without using bypass heat from the combustion from the Engine. combustion engine yeah um well that heater went out apparently oh, it's a dang dude it's a, it's a big problem um like, problem that jeep's having yeah it's such yeah. a big problem that my dealer said we can't actually order your part oh, until the end of march because we've been cut off by stellantis <laughs> because we've ordered so many and and so and this is this is what they say i don't know if this is accurate or not but um, you know, it's basically to give all the dealers kind of like a, a fair shot at, you know, getting them ordered, right? Which doesn't fully make sense to me because they're still putting new ones on the lot. But yeah, it's a hard one to to gauge. I know, like that Tundra I have out there, we were we were just getting whatever Tundra we could get, so we got that one. Has airbags in the rear. Not my first choice at all because it's just another thing to fail yeah. when you're out there, and uh, we had one of them fail. And we contacted the dealership as far as getting a replacement. And this was right before SEMA. It failed right before the SEMA show. And that's a SEMA truck. It needs to go into the show. Yeah. And I'm driving like this. So I'm like, this is not going to work. Plus, plus I'm, I'm down on the bumps and just rough as hell right in the back, you know? Yeah. So we contacted the dealer and the dealer says, we are on national back order. There is none available. We hey, can't get you any. Never want to hear that. Yeah. And so the only solution was I, I took it to Ready Lift, which Ready Lift's right around the corner. Um, I work with those guys a ton now because they're part of Will Pros. Will Pros owns Ready Lift. They bought Terraflex. So they've got a really kind of united front here when it comes to suspensions, which is pretty awesome. Go over to there and I'm like, we need a solution before SEMA. And they built a coilover lift in a day. Or not coilover, but a coil spring bucket lift to replace the airbags. Oh, nice. And they had it set up, and they built custom aluminum, billet aluminum bottom it's, it's, things, and it's good it was to awesome. Have, good to have friends with it, tools. It is. <laughs> yeah. They got it set up quick. And it was like, that's awesome. They got it all figured out, and yeah, we were safe. But yeah, that's the that's the problem with everything right now. Like I think we we mentioned this before. Like COVID has exposed before we were talking off air, but we talked about how COVID exposed everything. Yeah, it literally exposed everything. Every that, weak point. Every weak point that you could see, all of a sudden, boom! Here's all your weak points, and it's it's crazy how it's still hard to get stuff. It's everything still. Yeah. It, people are like, well, COVID's over. It's like it is, mm. but it's not. It's you know not, what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> we're still dealing with the aftermath effects of it it's, unfortunately it's so much residual stuff which 
let me let me just say real quick i feel like we should you know probably title this podcast uh, kid richmond shits on everything <laughs> <laughs> I, that's my that's my superpowers i have the ability to get other people to talk shit <laughs> i noticed that like as i'm as i'm shitting on this vehicle everyone's like well what is he driving what does he like what does he not like it just sounds like he doesn't like anything <laughs> you um, like stuff i i like just, stuff you, yeah you, you, here's the thing like you're somebody to me i'm like you need reliable vehicles yeah. And that's what you need as a person because you use your vehicles more than most people. Most yes. people, the reality of it is the, the new, I'll, like I'll use the Jeep, for example, the new Jeep as it is with the motor and stuff like that. If we just use the Pentastar V6, the three, six liter, have that by itself. And you have your basic stripped down Jeep, um, you with how they've engineered everything in it it's actually really solid it's a yeah. good platform it's good setup it's tried and true and it's probably gonna last fine when you start adding stuff that jeep is not good at that that the chrysler corporation the broader corporation isn't really good at like electrics you connect <laughs> yeah this is going to take time before they if they ever figure it out you know yeah. what i mean because they'll they'll just struggle with that stuff that's why you're telling me the problems you're having i'm like mm, not too terribly surprised yeah. like toyota does this stuff where it's like okay we're gonna throw airbags in the truck and it's like okay i'm gonna buy a toyota that doesn't have airbags because i know that's the one thing that i always hear about failing in a toyota yeah. or a lexus it's always their airbag suspension is gonna have problems yep. like the the lexus gx the 460 we built for sema for a few years back or for whatever um we pulled the airbags right out of that thing, put coils back there. It has a warning light on the dash. I don't care. I'm not going to fall prey to that problem. Yeah. Because even when I was buying it from the dealer, the guy was buying it from this awesome dude in Vegas uh, named Eldridge. I'll give you that feedback on him. <laughs> Super awesome dude. And he's telling me about the vehicles. He's just like airbags, just they just go out. Yeah. He's like, I have a Land Rover. This guy was dapper, dude. This guy was a pimp. I'll just tell you that. He was definitely dapper. Um, and he's like, I have a Land Rover and I've had to replace both airbags in that thing. And it's just welcome to airbags. This thing out in our showroom, this Defender that Garf's got, yeah. same deal. That thing's got airbags. And I'm like, this thing's cool. It's awesome to press a button and you got six inches of lift. I wouldn't trust it off-road long-term to save my life. Yes. Never. It would be, I wouldn't own that vehicle. Well, com just wouldn't happen. Compressors fail. And I mean, especially if you're in a, a colder state, um, you know, where things can freeze because, you know, compressors create mm -hmm. condensation and condensation gets inside of airlines and, you know, that stuff freezes over. Um, yeah. So it, it's definitely a problem. And, and that, that's the thing is, right. So you, you're talking about like uh, putting certain tech uh, or innovations inside of, vehicles but mm -hmm. then it kind of goes also beyond that in some, some other fine, areas some aren't that's what yeah I mean. yeah um well here's a prime example like so so the the rubicon that i've got right yeah so it, let's just you know say it wasn't even a hybrid um you look at jeep and you go okay what's going on with you guys uh why is it that when i get stuck and i put my vehicle in reverse um i am governed on my speed Right. So meaning when really? I shift into reverse, I just can't rip it backwards if I'm, if it's going to detect wheel spin. Right. Oh, interesting. Uh, so that's kind of, that's kind of a problem because for the first time I got stuck, uh, going forward, wasn't really a, a good option. I would have mm -hmm. just got stuck even more. Um, and, and I was using, uh, the traction boards, right. So I had them shoving underneath the wheels and, and so the idea was to get on top of the traction boards and then rip it backwards. Mm -hmm. And I discovered that this thing had the same shortcoming as the Raptor. Uh, the Raptor would do the same thing. You know, hmm. it would cut engine power somewhere around 15, 20 miles an hour. And, right. and that's something mm -hmm. where you go, okay, look, I'm off road. Um, let me do what I want to do. Let me drive the way I want to drive, you know, right. tell the attorneys to, to <laughs> off of the programming, you know, because I'm assuming that's what it is. Right. And that's kind of where like the stunt man in me it, starts to come out. It probably is where it is. This is the truth yeah. of it. Yeah. There's probably even, even though that you're in off road and it's like, I'm, I'm off road. I'm in four low. Yeah. I'm in my own, or maybe you're in four high. Right. But they're still trying to put certain governors in for protection for Yeah. I yeah. mean, that makes sense. Like, 
the attorney's thing. Okay. Yeah. They don't want me to, you know, yeah. kill myself. And Same reason why they don't want you to have 35 inch tires off the bat. You yeah. know what I mean? That yeah. kind of thing. And, and that's, that's the, that's the area where I wish, uh, uh, you know, the engineers could just have more, more control, freedom, more freedom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, at the same time, get a lot of feedback from, from users. Um, yeah. And, and account for all of those things. Cause I, I feel like we're in a world now where we can, like we can't account mm -hmm. for all those things. You know, it's like, like, uh, now the technology is there. Yeah. The technology you know? is there. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of like with the, the Tesla, um, mm -hmm. that drove up here. Like the cool thing is, is it's got, you know, the surround cameras on it, but they all record as a dash cam. And mm -hmm. when you think about it, it's like, okay, well, well, every vehicle after what 2019 has to have a reverse camera. Um, why doesn't every vehicle let you access that mm -hmm. as a dash cam? You know, I mean, it's, it's useful uh, on the street side of it. I mean, especially if you dump a ton of money into your rig and you're sitting at a stoplight and someone's texting and they rear end you and they, you know, mm -hmm. you're, 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 you're back here at expedition one having to, you know, get, get, uh, uh your bumper removed and have it, you know, repower coded because some dude plowed into you at 50 miles an hour. It's, it's like, okay, that's, that's something where you want proof of that. Mm -hmm. Right. And how do you get proof of that? Oh, video. Yeah, you got a camera. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think a lot of the vehicles out there, like when we look at things, we go, once we start adding computers and controlling and everything, it really can help, but it can really mm -hmm. hinder off-roading. I mean, because that mm -hmm. was a computer issue that I ran into that wouldn't let me, you know, rip in reverse to get unstuck. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, yeah, playing computers. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, um, but ultimately, it, it really does come down to... Um, you know, getting the off-road rig that can get you into where you want to go and do it in comfort, but mm -hmm. keep your gear or whatever you have that you're carrying with you, um, keep that concealed and lockable. Um, yep. Which was... Secured. Yeah, that was the big issue that I ran into when I had trucks. I mean, but now keep in mind, I was still using the truck as a truck, right? Like, because I, I do steel work as a hobby and, you know, I'm yeah. doing stuff on the house and having to get... <laughs> if you've ever had to buy a sheet of plywood, you're immediately like, damn, I need a truck. <laughs> <laughs> you keep carrying a sheet of plywood on a roof rack. Um, yeah. You do it. It's just not... Not you know. very fun. No, because like when you it's go a to weird. Yeah, it's weird when you go to strap it down. It's not like you can just strap it down. You've got to have something like two by fours or whatever put over top of it so mm -hmm. the straps don't cut through the drywall. Um, just little things like that, right? Mm -hmm. um, but then you start looking at it and you go, man, I, I want to offer it with a truck. That's cool because I can still use it as a truck, but I got to lock up all my gear. Yeah, and you got mm -hmm. a lot of it. And that's kind of the downside of having a, a truck bid, which led me to getting more into the, the Jeeps, the SUVs. Now, the other downside though, I would say is, uh, for some reason I would find cans in the, every truck yeah, I've ever dude. owned. Everybody, it's, that's, <laughs> it's like, why? <laughs> Someone's like drinking something. Every time, dude. Yeah, they're done yeah. with it. They're like, oh, garbage can. <laughs> they, just, <laughs> they, they, they throw their empty soda can in the back of the nearest truck bid. And you're mm -hmm. like, God damn it. <laughs> um, but yeah, that kind of drove me into, you know, going, okay, if I ever do need to kind of haul stuff, use a truck as a truck, I can just run a trailer. Yeah. Cause I'm, that's true. I'm paying for a lot of, uh, space like that real estate back mm -hmm. there that I don't use that often. And it's just better served, uh, being enclosed. Yeah. And, and then you're looking at putting camper shells on stuff, which, you know, there's, there's definitely a, very strong divide. Like if you ever go into a tundra form and hmm. you know, you see someone post a picture of uh, their new tundra with a camper shell on it. They, yeah. You're either going to get people that are like, what shell is that? Where'd you get it? How much did you pay? Mm -hmm. Or you're going to get people like, you should go hang yourself. <laughs> Can't believe you put a camper shell on your truck. There, there are some <laughs> cool shells that I've seen out there. I can't think of the names of them, but there's some pretty utilitarian ones that are new ones. Yeah. Um, that aren't just the regular fiberglass things that I think are kind of cool, but I'm not a, I personally am not a shell person. I think uh, it's not my gig. What is it? Like it's a, uh, three, something three initials, or something. A, a R E or something like that's one of them. Be, yeah. It's, it's kind yeah, of got yeah. like chiseled lines mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. 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 It's a modular one. That one's cool. But, but for me, the SUV kind of 
help check a lot of those cargo yeah. holding boxes. That's kind of how I feel is I'm like, just have an SUV. Yeah. You can, you know, at the, I, I get there's all these different viewpoints on what's the best thing. I mean, when it comes to SUV for me, I'll tell you what I am really excited about is the new Sequoia. That thing was a game changer. So um, if it came with a rear lock, a front locker, it'd be that much cooler. But you can get a rear locker in like a TRD off-road version, or you can get it in the TRD Pro. See, and that, that locker, that's, that's like another good point, right? Like mm. um, people don't realize that you get, you get that wheel spin on one side, you don't have a locker. Yep. And a lot of times when people are stuck, it's like, yeah, if you could just get, you know, unless you're high centered and if you could get all four tires turning and, and so you look at some of these vehicles that, you know, oh, it's an off-road vehicle you know, right. or it's rated and it doesn't have front and rear lockers. You can start to question whether or not that's actually going to suit your needs. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and, uh, yeah, tra I mean, traction's king, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's interesting, like, because this is another component computer technology piece that's in everything is traction control, right? It's very interesting the point traction can control can, can play in helping you get unstuck or helping you get stuck. Yeah. In certain circumstances, a lot of people don't know this, that traction control becomes your enemy. Um, sand, traction control can become your enemy. Yeah. It can also be your friend. It's very weird. In the same exact same conditions, traction control can get you stuck or it can get you out. Yeah, it's weird. Well, the the Tacoma, you know, it has that. Um, what, what what is that mode? Crawl that? control. The, the crawl control. Yeah. yeah, which is really neat. So in something like sand, you know, it could be very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if if you do have to use traction boards or something like that, or you're um, really needing to refine your wheel spin, meaning like. Uh, you know, you, you need to be able to, like, like you said, that to come as crawl control, right? So you need to be able to crawl back. And I'm talking about doing it at, you know, some of the finest, slowest speeds possible. Yeah. Because you're like, you know, if, if the wheel spins just the tiniest bit, I'm just going to, I'm going to keep roasting the tread. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you could have that computer controlled, it, it does become very helpful. Like what I've found, especially in the Jeeps, um, if I get stuck and I can't winch out and I have to use my traction boards, yeah, I've learned to leave the traction control stuff on mm -hmm. and let the vehicle crawl itself back up yeah. on the boards. Because, like, you know, you don't want wheel spin. Um, you don't want to speed back up on the boards because mm -hmm. you're not going to be able to. You'll just roast the, the cleats off. Um, so that's an area where, yeah, let the computer do its, do its job. Um, but then mm -hmm. at the same time, there's going to be areas where you're like, I don't want the computer. <laughs> I, want to, I want to turn it all off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. that's, that's the weirdest part about it. Um, with the technology, it used to be, it was like, okay, back in the good old days, it was, you have four wheel drive and here's your shifter, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's it. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? And then everything was, if you had a locking differential that was, you know, um, generally they were built in or it was the manual operation would be like an ARB, right? Or aux. There's a couple of them. They're cable actuated and stuff like that. Um, ARB was, is, is still air compressor, uh, actuated, but you really just didn't have the simplicity of it. Right. Uh, or I should say you did have the simplicity of it, right? Yeah. Now it's more of like, it's, it's cool. Cause it's like, okay, traction control, when you're driving in snow and you're on the road actually is extremely helpful in keeping you on the road. Right. Oh, was, I find, well, you know, like with snow, the, the thing that a lot of people don't realize is if you were to drive down the interstate, right. In a snowstorm, which I do yeah, once a week yeah, yeah, yeah. where I live. Um, if you were to do that with all four corners locked, right. You, oh yeah. You, you're, yeah, you're going to be going <laughs> because the vehicle's like, yeah, let's, you know, torque steer. Let's go mm -hmm. it this way. Let's go that way. Um, and that the, the great advantage of the 4XE is it has four auto. Okay. Right. So, so I, it's, it's kind of like an all wheel drive sort of. So it's like an all wheel or, drive. Yeah. It's, it's smarter than I am. Yes. Yeah. It's going to, it's going to detect the wheel spin and it's going to keep the vehicle driving straight. Yeah. You know, whereas the locker is just going to go, let's, let's push through it, baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want to go through this ditch? <laughs> let's go through the ditch, <laughs> you know, and, and, and you don't get that, you know, refined control. Yeah. You know, um, but, but, uh, yeah, I feel, I feel like, 
um, getting the, like the ultimate off-road vehicle to go in all those things, you know, the sand, snow, the mud, down the highway, comfortably, road noise, yeah. gas mileage. I mean, that's that's something we used to not really talk about too much. Kind of have to when gas becomes five about five dollars a gallon. You well, know what I mean? Yeah, it and, just hit, it hits the radar. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and, and, you know, I, I used to never look at, uh, gas prices. Um, but I have lately just because with having the hybrid Jeep, you know, I can go 20, 24 miles, something like that on pure electric. Right. And a lot right. of the driving I do is in pure electric, just around town. Um, it kind of makes you start looking more at gas prices, but you know, when you're trying to take into account where the future can go, you have to always consider well, they're able to charge me whatever per gallon now. Why, why, why do they have a reason to charge me less in the future? Mm. Right. Yeah. Like you do have to wonder. Yeah. It's conditioning. Um, yeah. I mean, there's no reason why gas prices should still be where they're at now. Um, according to all the experts, <laughs> I, it, it's, <laughs> it, to me, it's, I think it's all futures market based. I think it's just people. Yeah. When people have the ability to put money into certain regions, and you're talking about a con what should be a controlled commodity because we all need it and use it. Yes. When you have it so people can inflate that price, um, just hopefully to make more money on that inflationary spending or in it collapsing, right, and betting yeah. against it, it messes stuff up. Like that's my one beef about the futures market systems and stuff like that. And I think that, you know, I don't want to get into this big thing, but I mean, it's one of those things where that thing just becomes its own mess because it becomes this weird political football. Yeah. And I have, in my personal opinion, when you're looking at politics, what I see is you see two groups of people that are really fighting over who gets to control the money. Yeah. And they're like, these people are on my side and these people are on my side and this is the side that I'm on. So I'm going to speak to these people, I'm not necessarily going to serve them. Yeah. I'm just going to speak to them yeah. and make them think that I'm doing what they need. And, and by, by convincing them that I'm going to serve them, they're going to give me money. And then, so I've got money to maintain my power. And at the same time that I've got that money maintaining my power, I then know everything that's going on on a large scale of spending. And then I can use the money that I have yeah. to invest in certain areas and enrich myself. And that's really what pretty much 99% of those dudes, I mean, I haven't taken a tally, yeah. but most of them. Yeah, they're if, all dickheads. If, if, they, <laughs> yeah, if they go in there initially for the purpose of valuing people, which I think a lot of them do, yeah. they don't come out that way. Yeah. You and know they, what I mean? And they don't care that, you know, when I do 80, which is the speed limit, you, mm -hmm. know, go, you know, the interstate, you know, going to Wendover, Salt Flats area, it's 80. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, and I say this because it's going to be confusing to listeners. So the interstate is I-80. Mm -hmm. Speed limit's 80. <laughs> the Jeep <laughs> with uh, without a rack doing mm -hmm. 80. Bone stock. Mm -hmm. um, it's not great gets, gas mileage. It's about, and this is in a hybrid, two yeah. liter turbo, you know, 4XE. Mm -hmm. uh, 13 miles of the gallon. Yeah, it's not that's, fantastic. That's if I'm going east back home mm -hmm. <laughs> and I've got like a little bit of a tailwind. Mm -hmm. um, with the rack, uh, once I cross 70, yeah. you know, parasitic drag just, you know, hits it. And I'm I'm looking at anywhere from 10 to 13 miles per gallon. And, and you know, some of that is because we're at a little bit of an elevation, you know, 4,000 feet. Right. Um, you know, up there in Park City, we're at 7,000 feet. Um, so I am paying for the thinner air, but they, uh, they don't care about gas mileage. They, no. you know, they don't care that the, the Jeep's getting that. And so it is one of those things that I have to, you know, have to consider. Um, and, and that's why, you know, like now I'm looking at dumping the four XE just cause I've kind of run into, I've, I've started to run into problems, but you know, it's checked a lot at the same time. It's checked a lot of boxes, but the main thing is the comfort the mm -hmm. quietness you know? well that's the thing so here's the question what's the next rig for kid yeah so i, I think it's going to be the the thing that we just shit on a minute ago 
the thing with the airbags there's a, a land rover defender so yeah. uh so right now I'm, I'm actively just kind of looking for a defender maybe a 90 or a you one two you don't have to get those with airbags though do you no well you know honestly i don't know shit about them <laughs> i think i think you can get them with a, with with coils i mean they have like a they're interesting okay so i've taken that thing apart you can see that i've yeah. taken it apart um is very interesting getting into them because originally i'm looking at those going these i just thought these probably suck yeah. like i just didn't believe in them um they were they it was such a vast departure from what they originally were yeah. you know what i mean it was huge departure and i was just very unsure now that i've torn that thing apart and got into it i'm like i'm actually kind of impressed i'm i'm very surprised at how well engineered they are how much energy goes into assembling those things i mean there's like a toyota is like i can pop stuff on quick and easy and very very much engineered for quick speed assembly and, and all that stuff and i mean toyota makes a robust vehicle this thing i'm like okay there is a lot of complexity in these tons of complexity in how they're assembled but they're the the complexity of it it was like they were very specific saying this is what we want it to do we need it to function this way. We need it to be very strong. But yeah, we want all these panels made out of plastic. We want these made out of this material, which is kind of one of those where you're like, okay, that's a little crazy. They made it strong. I can yeah. tell you right now, like the bumpers, taking those bumpers off was work. Oh, have you seen the, ton of work. the crash test on them? I haven't. Mm -mm. So, um, you know, we have the NHSDA crash test. Right. Uh, and then, you know, over in Europe, they have their uh, NICAP standard. Is it mm -hmm. NICAP? Something uh, like that. Uh, probably i don't know i'm sure listeners will yeah <laughs> i'm i'm probably wrong about half the shit that I, comes out of my mouth <laughs> but uh basically you're listening to a conversation where we don't live google stuff yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah if you, you know you can go on youtube and just type in something like uh you know um defender 110 crash test and they do exceptionally well really like exceptionally well yeah um you know, like in terms of class, uh, you, you know, within meaning mm -hmm. class and price and similar vehicle, you know, you probably come down to the Bronco. Bronco, you know, hmm, uh, doesn't do as good. Yeah. Um, you know, but it does better than the Jeep in terms yeah. of, you know, rollover with, uh, um, with a glance and blow, right? Yeah. Which is kind of how a lot of the most accidents. of them are. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Jeep's going to roll over. You know, you know, kind of don't want that, mm -hmm. especially if you, don't have your doors or your top on <laughs> yeah which is which is weird it's like going back to the thing with the attorneys that you know are probably not letting me do f you know over 15 miles an hour in reverse but they're like yeah take the top off <laughs> give a shit if you fall out of your vehicle and roll over it's like wait, wait what <laughs> like yeah you probably got yeah kids <laughs> Fuck. take yeah. all the doors take the top off Put the windshield down. <laughs> you know, yeah, you can Superman it out the front. You know? <laughs> like, it's, but I can't go 50 miles an hour in reverse um, <laughs> if I'm stuck. So, so yeah, I look at, uh, I'm looking at that Defender 90 or 110 as the next vehicle. And I, I don't honestly know much about the suspension, but, you know, I, I test drove one when they first came, came out. Mm -hmm. and I, I ended up not getting one. Um, long story short, dealers are dicks. Um, it can be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Defender is one of those vehicles, or Land Rovers is one of those brands where dealers, um, they don't like to sell out of market. So if your local mm. dealer, which we only had one at the time, um, right. is charging a $20,000 markup, um, you can go out of state. But the issue is if a dealer sells to you out of state because they're not a plentiful vehicle here in America, mm -hmm. um, if they sell out of state, they're doing what's taking uh, what they call taking it out of market, mm -hmm. their market for mm -hmm. service, which is kind of like, should I look at that as a red flag? Cause they're like, no, look, we, we know this vehicle is going to be in here getting service so much that we're going to make X number of dollars of <laughs> that we don't want to sell to you out of state. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's probably a red flag. I'm just going to ignore it. <laughs> um, which, which is kind of like my philosophy on buying a lot of vehicles is, um, I've learned to just get rid of them when I get tired of them, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's one of those things where it costs money. I never make money on a vehicle when I sell it, even after I've added all this cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, it's just, 
it's an experience, you know. Um, it's not like super wealthy and can just burn through money. But for me, it's just one of those things where I go, what's the headache? Um, so if I get to the fender and it ends up sucking, yeah, I'll just, you know. Just I'll, get something else. I'll get something else. Um, yeah. I'll probably eat it. You know, I mean, I did that when I got rid of the, uh, when I got rid of the Raptor, because here in Utah, you know, right. well, you, you know this game. Um, when you trade in a vehicle, mm -hmm. if you get a new vehicle, you don't pay that trade-in sales mm -hmm. tax. What, so if that value for the trade-in was 50000 you don't pay the sales tax on that 50000 It gets applied to the new vehicle. So right. if you got a vehicle that was another 50000 cost then you'd pay zero sales tax which yep. is great so so i i went from that raptor immediately into a brand new tundra which i was like oh i'm gonna do all this mm -hmm. cool stuff too and then someone was like oh uh you should go um check out the check, rams check out the rams yeah it was a, it was a, it was a <laughs> uh, state trooper friend of mine uh uh kenny was like have you seen the new rams i was like no and this is like within two weeks of getting a tundra mm -hmm. and so then i went to the dealer and i was like whoa these are nice mm -hmm. like and they had the ram boxes and all this you know just the inside felt really nice um and so i traded it in like mm -hmm. under 30 days to get a new ram <laughs> yep. but i didn't you know i didn't and at no point in time was i paying sales tax um but that, that's just to give you an idea of how quickly I'll just jump from one thing to the next. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I did eat like 5,000 of the trade-in, you know, because mm -hmm. dealers are like, oh, yeah, we'll give you top dollar for your vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to give you a really good deal. It's like, why do y'all say that? <laughs> You're going to screw me. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, so I, I'll just... I'll jump in the, I'll jump out of the Jeep and I'll jump into a Defender. Um, like going into it, I know from the test drive and from other people I know that have owned them, um, it's quiet. Yeah. Uh, rides really good. I'm not going to have steering issues. Uh, all the creature comforts are there. Um, I can throw a rack on it. Uh, you're tearing one apart. So I'm assuming I'll be able to come in here and buy a bunch of stuff. You will put on it at some yep. point in time. And we're going to have some good stuff. Looking forward to that. Um, <laughs> I mean, they do look cool, I mm -hmm. think. Um, and, and, uh, I'll get to know the, the guys in the, the service lane really well. <laughs> because I, I, I honestly, I, I've, I've been reading in some of the forums and stuff and it sounds like, you know, just like any vehicle, there's going to be problems, mm -hmm. but most people are having really good experiences. Mm -hmm. um, just don't get a 2020 first year. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, after the first year, all of them are you know, pretty sound. Mm. Uh, the one thing that's going to suck, and I, I hope this is what you're addressing, is the front bumper to put a winch in it. Yeah. You know how much it costs to put a winch in the front of one of those from the dealer? I've heard stories, but so how much? I mean, I have the winch on my Jeep. It's the, you know, you'd have to run a clutch list because on the Defender, you won't have access to, yeah. to the clutch, which means it would have to always be engaged if you didn't mm -hmm. you know, go clutchless, which means you're always having to, you know, line in, line out mm -hmm. through the remote. Um, so the winch, you know, it's a 2300R winch. Um, you've got to get uh, new fascia. Uh, and then your winch cradle and everything, mm -hmm. and you spend around five to six thousand dollars to do that. Wow. Yeah. Dang. So that's pretty pricey. Yeah. That's that's from the that that's from the factory. Yeah. I, I should say I should specify because you know if like if you do something after the fact, once it leaves that assembly line, it's always going to cost more to go through the dealer. Right? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I should should clean that up. So so basically going from the factory to add all that's like five or six grand going through the dealer you're going to pay even more it'd be closer right. probably to 10 or something like that. yeah because you're paying for all that labor and everything so mm -hmm. i really hope you're addressing that so we are Good. there'll be so right now there's going to be I, i'll say there's going to be three versions two of them are the same thing one is just Here's your basic winch mount if that's what you're looking for. But I looked at that and I'm like, there's got to be a cheaper, cleaner way to run a winch mount and, and put one on, um, at least from what I've seen. And that's one of them. It's not my favorite. My favorite yeah. is going to be the more full bumper replacement. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a full bumper replacement with a skid plate. 
Um, I think it looks pretty good. I'll show you some pictures later. Right. And uh, yeah, you'll you'll have access to your winch. You'll be able to see your your feed happening, your your wire feeding or your cable. Yeah. Uh, which is kind of a must if you don't want to blow your winch apart. Yeah. It's helpful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. End up severing your line because you laid everything on one side. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And there will also be a rear bumper and there will also be a rack option. The OEM rack's really interesting. Um, it's, it's pretty well built, um, but it's just kind of weird and it's like way up there and I think it looks strange. So yeah, they put it really high. Yeah. Which, yeah, circling back to that gas mileage thing you know rooftop tents racks yeah know, they're all essential right mm -hmm. um but it's like guarantee if you put a rooftop tent on your vehicle yeah I mean, oh it's it's, it's five, gonna hurt yeah it's five miles to mm -hmm. the gallon that you lose right there yeah you know? uh, well i should say if you're like me and you like to get where you're going <laughs> you know sooner In, than later mm -hmm. um driving the speed limit <laughs> <laughs> yeah driving the speed limit um yeah 80 miles an hour you're just gonna yeah parasitic drag you're, you're mm -hmm. toasting through it's like a giant brick in the rent wind man yeah man you just got this you know this big old straw just you know sucking down gas mm -hmm. and, um yeah so i don't know why they did the rack really high on the defenders like that i don't i don't either um ours We'll have two versions. One will be a lot tighter. We'll see what it does. That that it'll be interesting to see what it does because even when you put a winch bumper on, when you do that stuff, you already you already add you automatically add drag to a vehicle like that. You do. Um, this one's going to be a little different because if you look at the defenders, how they're kind of very rounded and how they're shaped and stuff like that, they don't have a lot of the weird things that are being added by like Toyota. The new Tundra has this thing that folds down. Ram has it too. Um, depending on the option you get. If you get a Rebel, I don't think it has it, or TRD, TRD Pro Tundra, it doesn't have it. But it has like a little fairing that drops down mechanically, and it it gives you a little bit more wind resistance underneath the car. You also have um, the active shutters. Yeah. Um, those close, and that also is supposed to give you about a half a mile per gallon extra. Yeah, the Raptor so, had that on the, in the grill. Did it? Yeah. yeah. You know, for the, for the intercooler. Um, mm-hmm. It, uh, I don't think it, I don't think it really did anything. It, they I, hardly I, do anything. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> I, I will say that, yeah, the motor burned out on mine mm -hmm. um, and ended up just, you know, leaving it burned out mm -hmm. it is what it is. Paul blew up his, did yeah. you see any of the pictures of that? No. Yeah, no, his, his white one. I mean, he blew up, like when I say blow up, like the crankshaft was severed in half. I mean, it was, yeah, that's proper. He grenaded it. If you're yeah. going to. Blow an engine, then yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's 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 a, a lot more entertaining than mine. Yeah, blowing great smoke, you know. Um, but but yeah. So so Defender will be the next vehicle, and it's you know it's it's checking all the boxes. Um, it's gonna get me to mostly where I want to go. And and you know I I never really got into um, lifts outside of the first Tundra that I had. Yeah. Um, just because you know when when you start going bigger tires and all that, yeah, it means more clearance it means it you can air down can't do much bigger on these yeah you can do a little bigger maybe a little but maybe a little fatter and that that's why they added that that airbag system you know so you get your clearance mm -hmm. other ways but you know it's got really good approach break over it does. and they're independent suspension too yeah right and so it's not like your center clearance you're worrying about a differential i mean yeah it's i mean it's pretty nice departure angles there like you've got all really, they're locked yeah you know yeah, so it got a lot of lot of tech that you can turn off. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I like the fact that it's got the pano vision stuff going on with the cameras. You know, where they right. get spliced together and you can see the ground and all that. Um, which I, I've been <laughs> they put their cameras in good spots too. Yeah, they, it's weird to say that, but they do. They did. I, I've you know on the test drive, I was looking at where they were at, and I was like, I was pretty impressed with with how they set it up because I'll say that. I get stuck a lot. Like as, as I hear myself talking <laughs> about this, I, I'm like I, well, you came out there one time when I was stuck just mm -hmm. above my house. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now, I mean, keep in mind, we're on a mountain. Um, it was a lot of snow. It was a lot of snow. The roads were like pure ice. And I was, uh, because we didn't have year round water, we held our water in cisterns. Mm -hmm. um, I was bringing water down from the well above. So I had, I don't know, man, probably, let's see. Uh, it was a 400 gallon tank 
in the bed mm. and uh what was water weigh like eight pounds a it's not light all i know is yeah. i think four gallons weighs about 60 pounds i think yeah so i had um, right so. i had a little more than 60 <laughs> yeah yeah and uh yeah um there was someone coming up uh because you know we're we're on a mountain but we're still you know kind of in like this weird sort of neighborhood mm -hmm. uh and that person you know they didn't want to share the road and uh, th that's where like i i'm probably a little uh too kind um because I, I went to the right a little bit more than I should have. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there was a nice little drop off and I got stuck really bad. And yeah, you, <laughs> you, you came up there and uh, so you saw it. Like, a, but mm -hmm. I mean, I've been stuck so many times and every time is most definitely my fault. Just going into somewhere where I know it's highly questionable. Mm -hmm. um, pushing it a little bit harder. Pushing a little bit harder. Yeah. And most of the time it's in snow. Um, I mean, I remember one time being on this one snow packed road and I didn't realize it at the time that it was snow packed. I just thought it was a little bit of snow on top of a road that had been, you know, crushed down pretty hard. turns out I was on about three feet of snow pack. I was in the tundra. Wow. Um, and I broke through. Oh, and, dang. Yeah. Cause you know, yep. the way that snow packs out, you get a few inches that's pretty solid and mm -hmm. you're on top of it. Uh, everything else underneath. It's, it's crazy. It's weird. It's super soft, right? right? It's like this pie. Where you get you like got this, this crust. Yeah, you get mm -hmm. this nice crust. You stay on that, you're good. And uh, punch through, um, and then I was screwed. So, so I don't really look at the defender, you know, as one of those things that's you know limited to what I can do because I've already been able to do so much with with you know similar clearance in all my vehicles. Right. Um, so I know that I'll probably get stuck keep recovery boards and a winch and everything. I'll be able to get myself out. You know, mm -hmm. if there's nothing anchor to just, you know, drop a pool pal in the ground or bury the spare tire, mm -hmm. um, which, uh, if you're, if you're ever off-roading and super cold climates and you're worried about frozen ground, carry a pickaxe, you know, oh, yeah. carry like a Pulaski or, yeah, or Pulaski. something. Yeah. Pulaski. Um, I was just thinking. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and, uh, most definitely carry a full size shovel. Like, like, mm. um, this is a little bit of a side of our conversation, but I see a lot of these shovels. I, I'm, I'm sure you, you've got a collection of them around and you yeah. probably sell some. We do like, a lot of demos. Right yeah. Now. Demos and them. Um, so I, I grew up on a big farm. I mean, I grew up with a shovel in my hand, just yeah. digging holes for, you know, putting shit in or whatever. <laughs> um, but the one thing that you'll learn really quick, especially as you get older is you want a full size shovel. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. if your vehicle's stuck, it's not it's not stuck above you. It's stuck below stuck, you. It's stuck even <laughs> lower. <laughs> yeah. Which means you need that you reach. You need the length. You need the link. You need that leverage. Mm -hmm. Um I, I use uh it's actually a really nice shovel. It's a Fiskers. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's a great brand. It's so they make one that Classic has this, brand. That's my the usually the axes I buy are Fiskers. Yeah, they're awesome. They have this aluminum uh it's a specially uh, extruded aluminum shaft that they use for their handle. Um, I think it's proprietary to them, but mm -hmm. it's stupid robust. Um, carry that, carry a good pickaxe, be able to punch through the ground because you, you really never know when you're going to have to bury your tire in mm. the middle of a field and use, <laughs> and use it as a as a as a as, as an anchor, anchor point. Yeah, um, which is always an option. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't look at the defender. Like it's going to have too many shortcomings over what I already have now. Yeah. Uh, other than, I don't think it will unibody yeah. frame, unibody frame construction, which is different. Yeah. But Jeep Cherokee did that very successful. The sprinter vans are that way and they're extremely robust. Yep. Um, I mean, if you do it right, you can do it right. And this thing, it, that's what I mean. When I got into this, tearing it apart, this thing's built really well. Oh yeah. It's surprising to me how well they're built. Yeah. And so it, it they're try. not a mall crawler. No. But like perception of it is, right? Oh, because it's, oh. it's pretty. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. is very pretty. And yeah. they're doing things that not everybody started doing. They're doing full four-wheel independent suspension. That's not a super common thing right now. Jeeps are still solid axles, and that's yeah. one of their trademarks. Um, Bronco decided rear solid axle front independent suspension, which is an awesome setup. Um, but nobody's really made that jump and they made that jump. And like I said, it was a huge departure from what was before. Yeah. But I think as far as functionality, I think over time we're going to find that these things are very 
very useful oh, we, on a worldwide level. Look at uh, ATVs and side by sides. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, same, they're running independent. Yeah, same mm -hmm. setup, right? You get your five link in the rear, independent, mm -hmm. um, which gives you a lot of a, a lot of utility value mm -hmm. when you're driving on the street and then making it to your trail. Um, but yeah, so I'm I'm really looking looking forward to that, and yeah, I mean, then I'll be able to you know put a bunch of miles on it and shit all over it. I'm, I'm <laughs> most certain that I, like I, I can already in my head know of things from the test drive that I'm going to shit on, like just the way that you operate <laughs> the climate control, that that particular knob um, is designated for a couple different buttons. They kind of did what Tesla does with their steering wheel controls where like one button functions mm -hmm. as a few different things. Um, but yeah, I, I'm going to, hopefully get into one of those soon i can't move the jeep until i get it fixed right <laughs> so i've got a cracked windshield oh i've got, I've got gorilla okay. glass and I, yeah. I will say the gorilla glass has held up amazingly well like on day two i had a few rocks that i saw coming mm, at the vehicle big ones hit. yeah mm -hmm. at interstate speeds didn't crack um the previous jeep that i had was eco diesel uh wrangler rubicon mm -hmm. um went through three windshields on that Ooh, this yeah. one I've, I've gone through one and the first replacement because it came with gorilla glass was free um now it's on me but i can't replace it till the dealer gets one in mm. that's kind of that covid mm -hmm. has caused problems thing yep um but i still can't sell the vehicle because check engines light on because it's got a, a you know cvs receipt list of <laughs> OBD deep codes and i can't get the heating element replaced and you know until, until you can get one till i can get one yeah um, until the dealer will get one yeah mm -hmm. so for the next month and a half or so i'm just you know driving it around like a regular old pedestrian gas vehicle <laughs> 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 so uh hopefully i get that stuff resolved and get into something new and and um yeah the the goal you know like say it's to always get my camera into a spot mm -hmm. um you know comfortably uh that most people don't see and mm -hmm. and i know a lot of people listening to this thinking oh man you should just get a trailer and get a side by side or something like that but it still kind of goes back to the thing where like i don't think so yeah because I'm, I'm i don't think you should no some people could but i don't think yeah, so at all yeah and you know the reality is if i did that i I would just dick off all day. Like if I got a, <laughs> if I got a side by side of like a new Maverick or something, you know, turbocharged, like, like I would probably be backing it off with the trailer. I'd, I'd look back at, you know, the 30 some thousand dollars worth of camera gear that I carry with me. Um, and I would probably say, you know what, I'm going to leave that stuff in the car and I'm going to lock the car and I'm just going to, I'm just gonna fucking rip <laughs> along and just see what kind of shit I can jump off of and find out what the suspension has. Um, because yeah, that's the that's the inner child of me that's gonna come mm -hmm. out. Um, so so it's nice to have it's nice to have the SUV style off road vehicles that you can even with the trucks that you can comfortably load everything in, drive into where you want to go, mm -hmm. do what your intention was. Yeah. Because that's the other reality of off-roading is you have these intentions when you go to off-road. Like, I mean, if you're on a dirt bike, it's just, you know, mostly to have fun, right? Right. So, sometimes yeah, it's yeah. Like scout and check out new locations. Um, but when you're off-roading, you just like, it always feels like no matter where you're at, like you're kind of in this new kind of planet. You're like exploring. Yeah, you're exploring. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, that rock looks neat. I like the way the yeah. trees are laid out or whatever. You know, oh, there's a deep mud hole. I shouldn't, but I will go through it. <laughs> um, the snow's too deep, but I'm going to do it anyways. And and those are things that it's like they don't help serve your purpose if your purpose is to try to get somewhere. Mm -hmm. They're just, they're kind of entertaining on their own, mm -hmm. right? Like, like, why am I going through this instead of going around it when like I'm trying to get over there and this is just a distraction and it's because it's part of the <laughs> off-road experience. Yeah. Um, so being in a, you know, in an actual, you know, enclosed vehicle helps me, uh, obtain my original objective of going out and trying to get, get the camera get into done. something. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, yeah. And I would say it's, it's for you, it's a, it's a multi-part thing. You kind of already said, I mean, the, 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 the better sealed the vehicle, the less dust you have inside, the less dust getting on your components, and your pieces and parts like that. I mean, that, that makes a lot of sense to me. 
Yeah. So, and it'll keep you a little more tame, which is good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A little bit, a little bit more tame. Yeah. The cameras, help, you know, going back to the camera thing, like they kind of help that, you know, because mm-hmm. when you have, uh, I mean, you've got your visuals, you're looking around. Um, but when you have the 360 camera and you can kind of see everything's going around, it kind of puts you in check. You're like, yeah, maybe I shouldn't, you know, mm-hmm. it, it, uh, plus knowing, <laughs> plus knowing the cost of repairing stuff. Keeps yeah. You in check. Yeah. You know? It certainly does. We, well, that's one of the things I tell people that like, you know, when they look at building an off-road rig, I'm like, if you're just trying to go fast off-road, like get a side-by-side because like, if oh, you're it's just, fun. Yeah. If, because if you get out there in your vehicle and you're, you're just, you know, throttle down mm-hmm. the whole time, you're, you're kind of putting stuff on the edge and you wreck your vehicle. You don't even have to wreck it. You just, let's just say you're not reading your terrain well and you hit some baby head size rocks or you get into a little bit of a, a gully crossing too fast and yeah. you, you know, you snap a ball joint. Mm-hmm. Are you triple a tra- trailering <laughs> it? Like what's going yeah. on right with the, you know, with the vehicle that you've trailered in, you know, just put mm-hmm. it back on the trailer. You're going to limp it back to the trailer. And- yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so that's, that's the thing with, with building like a good off-road rig. Uh, and, and I think a lot of people end up kind of doing the thing that I do, but it doesn't really get discussed because it doesn't sound as, you know, you know, cool bravado, mm. um, is that, you know, it's, uh, it's a single vehicle purchase that's going to be able to allow you to do a lot of things. Right. And, you know, not everyone's going to want to drop tons of money in you know, dedicated off-road vehicle. So it's like, you want to have all those things encompassed Mm -hmm. in one vehicle and Mm -hmm. still be able to get back home. Mm -hmm. For, yeah. And I would, what you're doing is, is exploration effectively, I think, because you're doing, even though, so what you're doing is photography, that's your whole thing, but your specific photography, what I see you put, I mean, you have your nature shots because you're in nature. Yeah. But what you're looking for is you're looking for those animals, right? You're looking for that rare animal and that really interesting, neat shot of that animal. Um, it's the landscape. Yeah. Yeah. And it's built, yeah. The animals are built into that landscape and everything like that. I mean, that's what you're you're hunting down for that, that beautiful image. And that's something that I, I couldn't imagine doing that on a side-by-side personally. I just couldn't imagine doing it. Yeah. Get, you, you, it's almost like you need to be moving slower in general. Well, it's, you know what I mean? Dirt in your eyes. You know, the, the funny thing with, with, uh, with having a Jeep and then, you know, having some experience in side by sides is you get the side by side and it doesn't have a windshield. Right. And yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't have, you know, yours with windows in them. Um, but then you get the Jeep and you can take all those things off but you get the side by side and they're mm-hmm. like we sell windshields and we sell doors mm-hmm. with yeah. win- windows where it's going and, mm-hmm. yeah because it's telling you it's like you know as fun as it is, can be to take the top off you know if you're not uh like pasty like me <laughs> um do you want to you know because like when mm-hmm. you look at side by sides you go you know a lot of people are going and then closing that cabin because they're realizing they're just, you know, they end up filthy. Mm, they do. You know, um, just everything's mucked up. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then you look back at the Jeep and you're like, guys, let's give, give me this <laughs> with, with, you know, a functioning hard top in terms of, you know, mm-hmm. it being quiet. And that's, that's, that's what's pushed me to the Defender. Um, yeah. Is, you know, it's, yeah. It's solid and it's on top. Yeah. The The hard top, the Jeep hard top, I can tell you they've gotten way better over time, but it's this balance between light versus noise. I had a, my first JL man was terrible. That had some sort of, it, it the top did not fit well. Yeah, that, they, it was just loud. Yeah, they did have a, a lot of issues with the, when, when did they come out? 2017, 2018? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right there. I think yeah, it was 18. Of, a lot of fitment issues, which is funny because Bronco, you know, comes out and, you know, they're like, yeah, everyone gets a soft top because we can't, because uh, they do, can't color match <laughs> those hard tops. They got like, I got a second gen hard top on my Bronco and it's nice, but, um, like Still, it didn't leak. Yeah. I'll put it that way, 
But dude, the expansion and contraction that that thing has in the wintertime, if it gets down below like 22 degrees, noisy. all of a sudden it gets super noisy. Yeah. And it's just because it's shrinkage, right? Yeah. It's just, <laughs> it's just, they, they haven't quite figured that out. You know what? It may just shrinkage. Yeah. Right? Shrinkage is a, <laughs> it's a real problem. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It's a challenge. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, the, I think you'll see better revisions as they go. But I just think it's going to take some time. I think the Defender Defender's probably a good option for you. I'm looking yeah. forward to see what you choose after that. But we'll see. There's going to yeah. be a lot more out there. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, we considered a Rivian at one point, the SUV. which so heavy. You know, They're I, so cool, but they're so heavy. I, I will say, though, I, I honestly, I wish I had uh, just gone ahead and plunked down the deposit because it, I would have locked in that original pricing right. yeah you know rivian, like 70 grand or something like that yeah it was 70 grand you know well built and then the rivian turns around they're like oh, it's actually ninety yeah. thousand dollars <laughs> <laughs> and and they had to they had to go back and they had to honor all those original prices which means if you had plunked down that deposit yeah you, you just make some cash vehicle. yeah you make some quick cash but mm -hmm. i uh you know i do hope that you know everyone listens you know jeep and ford and and uh um you know well, I don't know. I haven't had the experience in the Defender, so I don't know. But I hope that all the auto manufacturers are listening more to to users like me, because mm -hmm. you know you have this this diehard bunch, you know, out there, especially with Jeeps in particular, where it's like, you know, if you did a Jeep without a, without a solid axle on the front, mm -hmm. like I'd never buy another Jeep product again. And it could be the best thing. It could it could you know excel in every way possible off-road mm -hmm. you know without a solid axle you know with whatever they could come up with but you just have these diehard fans and they're they're really loud enough that they get a lot of attention you know it's, it's mm -hmm. why it's why uh every time because I, I drive a bunch of different vehicles you know in day-to-day -day life and every time i get in the jeep I always forget, no, window controls are in the center console. They're not on the door because, you know, the doors mm -hmm. come off. Because mm -hmm. there's so many people that want to take their doors off. But, I mean, I, I live in a place where winter is eight months long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doors ain't coming off. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, like, like I said earlier, keep the kids safe, keep the dog safe, you know, keep everything inside the vehicle. Um, mm -hmm. Plus, I got really white, skinny legs, and I, I wouldn't want to roll around with the doors off in the Jeep, and uh, that's that's all people see. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, so you you mentioned on the diehards, one thing about that too, like, so when Jeep did, I just remember when Jeep went from a plastic, from a metal grill to a plastic grill, okay? Just that alone on the TJs, I remember the debates that were going on the forums where people were just losing their mind when the new Jeep JK was introduced and it had a plastic grill people were like that's it i'm, I'm not getting one of those yeah. those are now that ended up being a total farce i mean everyone and their dog bought a jk i mean especially an unlimited the four-door i mean th that was a revolution when it came to jeep right because that was the first four-door one but it was it was interesting watching it people have a hard time shifting people have a hard time accepting that new thing and until it's proven itself and then there's that that group of people you i guess you'd call them the image leaders yeah. that are watching out and they go yeah that's gonna work and then they buy it and then they use it and they show it um it just takes a while for people to be willing to accept those changes it's it's, it's very true so it's very true i yeah I wonder, I wonder what you can equate that to like because i you know, I, I, I try to really stay out of any kind of Facebook groups or forums and stuff because there's so much vitriol. And it's I, getting nasty. It's getting really nasty. I, you know, you could have someone jump in a forum and, and you know, ask a simple question, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I don't want to use wheel sizes as an example <laughs> because it gets <laughs> hey, what offset should I run. But no, you, you'll have someone, uh, here, here's a really good example. This is, this is, this is a, you know, something that happened um it was really sad uh can't remember if it was the raptor or the ram but this guy jumped in he was having problems getting a spare tire down hmm. so he had a flat tire because he needed to access the spare tire and he posted in the group and he got eviscerated and i'm reading these comments <laughs> and i'm just like man he's oh it was the raptor i remember because the way that you have to put the um, your key in to, to be able to lower the, the 
the rear tire like it kind of doesn't it go, doesn't go straight in it goes in a, a weird angle. kind of angle yeah. yeah so this guy was having problems with it he got eviscerated and it, i reached out to him and i was like these people are dicks don't listen to them and the dude broke down and like it was his wife or his mom that had just died he's got oh, a flat dude. tire he's on the side of the road you he's know, struggling with an issue struggling with an issue um and this guy is a grown man just getting torn apart and <laughs> and it's you know it's other grown men that are doing it and it's just it's sad to hear mm -hmm. um but you know i i remember that story and then i i look into you know the comments that i see uh, even on instagram posts where someone posts something and you know it could be about some new tech i mean evs is most definitely the latest hottest thing to to shit all over yeah um and i've got plenty of junk that i can talk on yes yeah. <laughs> and it's just it's but it's gotten to the point where it's like it's just so many people mouthing off that like don't have any experience with it mm -hmm. and it's it's always funny to hear someone's opinion you know that thing's junk blah 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 i'd never buy one it's like well and mm -hmm. it, you, if you just don't wait eventually you know will. <laughs> yeah or, or eventually you will but like if you don't have experience with it then how do you know yeah right um and, and i mean there's a lot of things that you can say uh that kind of contradict that i mean like with food like i mean obviously if something was super disgusting you know <laughs> i don't want to yeah eat, i don't you know i don't need to eat raw sewage to know that it's nasty That's right gross. but but at the same time like there's certain tech that gets put into these vehicles um in certain uh functions and features that are useful that until you've actually used it you don't know um, mm -hmm. like so i'm over 40. uh not that this is off for a vehicle but but i i have this feature now in the in the jl um so in the tesla when i throw on my turn signal i get a little image on yeah. the screen all right so in the jl i have it now because i i put a taser on there and it allows the rear camera to get displayed on my on my head unit when i put the turn signal on um and so many people are like just you know check your blind spot blah blah, blah whatever okay mm. i'm over <laughs> 40. i don't know what i did i just destroyed my neck like a week ago yeah and looking over my shoulder it right hurts. now holy right? Sh yeah i'm like yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's one of those things that comes with age. You just wake up and you're like, what? I slept wrong. Like, how, you slept <laughs> wrong? Like, how, like, that's a thing? Like, yeah, you just sleep wrong and you, and you pull a muscle. Yep. Um, so you get things like that that get put into vehicles and you get this group of guys that come at it with so much vitriol and they're like, you're just stupid. You're just lazy. You know, turn your head, whatever. And you're like, I can't. <laughs> Frankenstein, man. I can't just. It's not that easy. Instead, I can just go boop, boop, oh, okay. You know, motorcyclist, mm -hmm. you know, in, in my blind spot, right? Yeah. Is there? It's just great. helpful tech. Yeah. Yeah. Helpful tech, which picking up on that rear camera thing, um, all the auto manufacturers, I hope you're listening, you give me a, a front camera uh, washer, but you don't give me a rear one. And it's that over does see they're, they're thinking <laughs> i was i was taking it apart yesterday yeah. that's how i know i was like what is this little thing and i'm like yeah look at that it's it, so clever and it's nice to be able to see what's in your rear view because you know when you're going down the road all the stuff's coming up on the back gate to mm -hmm. whatever you know whatever you're driving um you get off road you need your rear view camera mm -hmm. uh so like the other day i had to do like a 27 point turn and on this one trail um and, and I, I had to because if I had gone just a little bit too far this way or a little bit too far that way, I would have been, you know, in yeah. a four foot washout dish, mm -hmm. which is not going to be fun to get out of. And that's where the cameras come into play. But I can't see out of the rear camera because it's filthy. And it's not one of those things where it's going to be easy to get out because mm -hmm. the road that I was on was like a solid sheet of ice. Mm. Like as soon as you open the door, yeah, you're you're on your ass. Yeah, because the way the wind had the, the way the wind had <laughs> I've had, had those. blown over the road, it had just like turned it into glass. Mm -hmm. um, I do carry traction spikes with me, you know. Mm -hmm. So if I ever have to walk around in a situation like that where I'm stuck, I've, I can still get traction. Um, and it's just it's one of those things where you go, okay, let's let's talk about usable tech within vehicles, usable innovations within vehicles 
for off-roading. It's like rear washer cam, you know, mm-hmm. something that simple. Simple and useful. Simple, simple and useful, and it can save you a ton of headache, especially if it's pouring down rain or something and it's covered mm-hmm. in mud or whatever. You know, like I just need to clean it just mm-hmm. real quick. I don't want to get soaked just mm-hmm. trying to, you know, check. And this was like a real, like, the, the trail was where I was at was like a little bit wider than the actual Jeep. So when I say like 27 point turn, it was like, <laughs> you, were, you were doing the whole, uh, whatever it is. Yeah. I can't remember what the, the joke of it. What's the movie? What's that movie? I don't know. Mike Myers movie. Oh, Austin Powers. Austin yeah. Powers. He's in the yeah. whole, uh, golf yeah. cart. That's and, what I was uh, thinking. Yeah. <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen that in per not in a golf cart, but with a car. It's, yeah. it's, <laughs> Highly entertaining. you've done that yeah highly entertaining it's probably like a hill versus it was like here's a cliff and here's a hill and that's God. yeah yeah so you don't even get like to just bump it against no. two yeah it's just straight to your death mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> cool well that was a good chat yeah we had a lull yeah we did um here's of, our lull yeah a little lull we've lot. actually been going for an hour and a half can you believe that damn it it, it does go by fast it goes by fast yeah. see as soon as i start shitting on vehicles it's like time flies i was gonna say when it comes to that whole thing so would you recommend people if they decide to follow you you're on instagram you I, post you pro, do, are you open to whoever oh you? yeah yeah so it's a it's a public profile i, I don't post as often as i should and see how much noise i can make pouring water um so i don't <laughs> i i don't post as i don't follow the instagram gods you know like oh you gotta post this whatever and i I, I've yeah, got, I see it pop up. You, you you might post like once a day for a little while, and then all of a sudden you won't post for like a yeah, month. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but usually you're posting pretty like it's either you're posting really cool photos of really cool things. Usually that's what you're posting on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Every once in a while on Facebook, you 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 make you just like have to say something. Yeah, and you let it be known. Yes. yes. Would you recommend that most people just not take it too seriously or? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Seriously, most I would recommend most people not take it. Too, I I don't. Too when you post, I'm just like, oh, he's in a mood. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Know, you know what I mean. You read an article, you're doing something, yeah. you're just like, you're in a mood, and I'm like, yeah, all right. Yeah, he's been triggered. Read it. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. I you know m- most people will read into a lot of the stuff they say, and they they don't realize that you know I was I was raised by you know uh, sailors, and, mm-hmm. you know. It's just, you know, you use uh, certain words as adjectives, whatever. <laughs> and, 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 uh, yeah. So I'm on Instagram. Um, and I, I pretty much like my actual feed. Um, it's just really good photos. It's just I've, photos. It's yeah. photos that I've edited there. I'm like, I'm going to post. Um, Facebook so that, is where I see you post once in a while your crankiness. Yeah. But, but now, everybody does, right? Precisely. Now, the, uh, the Instagram stories. It's usually where I end up posting my adventures and stuff. You know? mm-hmm. And I'd, I'd done the vlog thing for a very short minute, um, mm-hmm. which I upset a lot of people by not really? continuing Oh, by not do. continuing it. Oh, okay. Yeah, so honestly, the feedback that I got was really good. I mean, there were a few stupid comments, right, um, which you're always going to get. I, You know, I'm convinced that, like, Jesus could come down and be like, hey, here's a cure for cancer. And if he posted it as a YouTube video... <laughs> Um, people would be like, fuck that guy. That's the, ug- <laughs> that's the ugliest robe I've ever seen. And then he could be like, here's the cure for every cancer no, known to man. I'm pretty sure you're, yeah. you're right. Somebody, yeah. somebody's going to jump in. Oh my God. Yeah. Or a few hundred somebody's or a few thousand. Or a few thousands. Yeah. And, and, and then that just triggers like this hive mind where, you know, if, if you're predominantly seeing good comments, they're mostly going to stay good Mm -hmm. but if you're predominantly seeing bad comments people are like oh it's an opportunity for me to shit on it Mm -hmm. too and that that just creates this people just they just go in it's like their vent yeah oh we all get to vent we all let's get some catharsis and be angry about something Mm -hmm. or it's bots you know yeah i have to wonder about that you know is it just you know well you know i i try to not pay too much attention to the comments um which i mean i I don't have a big enough following that i honestly have to worry about any of that Mm -hmm. um especially within facebook because you know within facebook i I can show you on my account i was gonna say do you have your phone yeah 
You should drop air, airdrop some of your some of your favorite photos. You can okay. airdrop them to Will. Okay. And then we can actually look at them. Well, like the the problem with the favorite photos is literally I've hearted the ones of me naked and <laughs> no. Um. So so yeah, I'll I'll airdrop you some stuff. But um, yeah, I I, I and Facebook uh have maxed out the number of people that can friends request me. Oh, like if you look, you, yeah, yeah, like more, you know, and, and I, I can't remember where that top out is like 24,000 or something, or I, what I don't is know, it? But uh, at some point, you have to pay for them, yeah. And well, the thing is, is like once you're, you know, so because I was a stunt coordinator and stunt performer, once your name um, gets put on the registry and people are like, oh, you can hustle this guy for jobs, mm -hmm. right? Because he, since he's a coordinator, he can hire you. Uh, you start getting all these friends requests, but like my Facebook is public, but at the same time, I know every single person who I'm friends with, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Instagram's different because anyone can follow you. Um, but, you know, I, I pretty much stick to using Instagram stories as an area where I can post the daily adventures and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. The feed is, you know, photos that are more high-end that I've edited that, you know, I will have people reach out to me, hey, can we use this? You know, do you want to sell us this? Whatever. And I just, I won't go down that road. Mm. Once you start selling your stuff, you've applied a, 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 a value to it. Right. Um, you know, and the concept of money mm -hmm. uh, is something I, I struggle with just because I look at, you know, like, okay, we still have to eat, still got to buy stuff. But I mean, money is so made up. I mean, it really is. You know, mm. it's like that movie, Don't Look Up on Netflix, where there's, a, there's an asteroid. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and basically, you know, if you haven't seen the movie, uh, we don't defeat the asteroid because it costs too much. <laughs> it costs too much to take on the asteroid. So they're like, yeah, just let it blow the planet up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, so I, I look at my photography like that. Like, don't apply a value to it. Don't mm -hmm. let other people value it. Uh, so so that's kind of how I use those, those media outlets. And then YouTube is the area where I was on there. I was trying to do more high-end content. I didn't really know what kind of voice I wanted to have, and I, but I knew I wanted to go after the more uh, off-roading uh, arena. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, then COVID hit, and uh, it yeah, just kind of... everything up. Yeah, it messed everything up, and it changed a lot of the plans that I had, and uh, I just haven't gotten back into it. But I, just, I see uh, comments on there all the time where people are like, man, I wish you would start producing content again. Mm. I just watched all your videos. You, know? you should. And, and I'm thinking, wait, did I post more than one video? Because if you watched all, no. So yeah, I think I post like half a dozen videos or something and people are like, yeah, I watched them all. Um, but it was just trying to be more high, a little bit more higher end production value. You were doing really good videos. Yeah. I'll say that. Thank you. Like you were doing very good videos. Your production value was really good. I was super impressed with it. I mean, um, yeah, dude, it, they were good. They were entertaining. They were the right length. Yeah, they weren't like too long, um, and the content, the the cinematography was really good. You got really good with drones. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've crashed a lot of them. One was into one of my light bars. I uh, recall so, that. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> zigged when I should have zagged. Yeah, <laughs> wish I wish we still. I wish we would have got that footage. That would have been I, cool. <laughs> great footage. <laughs> So that that's the thing that DJI has cleaned up since. It, there used to be this delay mm -hmm. with hitting the record button and mm -hmm. when it was actually recording. iPhones had it. A, a lot of you know camera makers had it. But yeah, I flew a brand new drone directly into your Tacoma. Yeah, that was right the build. windshield, and then yeah, and that uh, that, <laughs> that glance off the top of the windshield because I hit the very top of the windshield. Um, sent it right into that uh that pl light bar mm -hmm. it was actually uh it was baja designs or ba baja, baja designs, designs light yeah. bar um and i remember the camera it the hit gimbal. so hard because you were doing like 50 or 60 miles mm -hmm. an hour somewhere there i was maxing the drone out which at the time i think it was like 38 miles an hour mm -hmm. and it hit so hard it embedded the camera into the light bar it did through the uh it wasn't uh it was a polycarbonate lens that was mm -hmm. on the light bar punched right through that it and did. It, the camera was just wedged in there nice and <laughs> I'm very proud of that <laughs> i've i've wrecked a lot of drones um but you have to to 
get good at flying them. Mm-hmm. Just, you know. Yeah. No, that's, I, I finally accepted that reality because I needed to, I bought that huge uh, Inspire 2, right? Yeah. That thing is complex to fly. That is a, that is a two-man operation if you're going to get good footage. It, it'll take your fingers off. The props will. Will they really? Yeah. If you if you screw around and, yeah, the motor's on your Inspires. I had no idea. Yeah. Um, yeah, those are intense. So for me, I was kind of like, okay, this thing, when I go out to fly it, it's a whole production. I'm like, I need to get something smaller. So I actually bought two smaller ones. And I got like, a, I think the, I, I want to say the the Mavic Mini is what it's called or something yeah. like that. Yeah. I got one of those and it, that was like, okay, this is a perfect learning test bed. And so I just flew that thing around, got to know him pretty good. I still, and then I've got the, uh, I want to say the Mavic Pro, maybe it's the Mavic Pro 2 or something. I can't remember. Got one of those. I've crashed that thing at least twice. Yeah. It's amazing how durable they are. Oh yeah. Like I've crashed it twice. One, each time it was one of those i was doing a shot where it was swinging around and when it came around it ended up like just there was a bank so the sensors weren't giving it proper information yeah so it's coming up on a bank and each time though it just glances into the bank and just slid up on it and that was it so not too major of a crash but it was one of those it couldn't read it right because whatever data it was being sent like if it was a wall there it'd be like hey there's a wall there i can see that but it was just at that right slope that the whatever information that it was hoping to receive, it was not receiving. It was sending back. Not until it was like, I'm about to hit the bank. Oh, I hit it, right? It was like right when it was hitting. But learn how to drive, fly them a lot better. And yeah, you just have to like be willing to crash them. Yeah. It's weird. Did, you, if you want to fly them decently, you've got to be willing to just let you, them hit You had the wall. an employee that... Oh, Ryan. Yeah, he flew one right into your wall. Oh yeah. Shop, right? Oh dude, he, he lost it. <laughs> I remember that because it was a, it was a week after he had set the, one of your cameras on the wheel of his. FJ oh yeah. And, and he ran it over. Forgot it was there and then drove off. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, it crushed him, dude. I remember when he, he was so embarrassed and I'm like, don't be, don't be dude. It's just, don't. yeah, it's not a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> he, yeah. Yeah. Ac- you know, Accidents happen when it's with things like that, where like there's no lives or injury at risk. Mm-hmm. It's fun. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> a friend of mine, uh, he, he got a brand new Mavic 3 Pro uh, not too long ago. And we, we meet up, we're, we're looking for some elk. And there was like fresh, like three, four feet of snow on the ground uh, from the previous couple storms. And he sets it on the hood of his van and he's like, you, you want to fly it? And I'm like, yeah, sure. I was, and I look right out and I was like, I have a history with drones. I'm probably going to crash it. <laughs> and uh, on takeoff, I crashed it. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so it was sitting on the hood of the van. The van hood is, you know, kind of slightly Slope angled down. Mm-hmm. Um, and when it was lifting off, I, I don't know what happened, man, but it just decided to, you know, do a little bit of a loop-de-loop and slam itself into the ground. Broke one of the props. Swap the prop out and I mean, still fluid, but like you said, I mean, it's pretty robust. So, you know, you can, uh, you can bury them pretty good. Um, I mean, I, I've, I've flown drones right into the salt flat, like just dived cause I was, I was trying to make my way back. I had, I had explored pretty far out with the drone and the battery was like dead mm. and it's like, we're coming down, but it was already so high up in the air and mm-hmm. I kept overriding it. I don't think you can now, but it used to be like you could just override it mm-hmm. until it's and just, just keep pushing. Yeah, until it's just dead in the middle of air, and that that's basically what happened. Is as it as it was coming down, the battery is dead, and then it just died completely, and it just <laughs> you know plows into the salt and uh, cleaned it up, and still flew. Really? Yeah. Was that a Mavic? It was a Probably. Mavic. Yeah. It was the Mavic. Uh, it was the Mavic One, and it kept working fine it would get really hot mm-hmm. i ended up just throwing it away really i'm dead serious yeah <laughs> I, I kept the batteries because it was like batteries are probably worth something mm-hmm. but it just got to the point to where like it was just this hodgepodge i had jb weld all over it um because some of the parts to like replace it's like an iphone where like you go to say oh i need to replace this one little thing and you're like yeah but you have to disassemble mm-hmm. everything mm-hmm. i was like just jb weld everything <laughs> and then they make that uh that tape that like hardens that you can put on stuff mm-hmm. had that all over it so it got to this point to where it was so unbalanced 
<laughs> yeah. That the only thing With worth any repairs. Bit, yeah, was the props that were on it because they were still good and the batteries, mm. which is kind of a testament to the batteries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. DJI makes a great drone. Yeah. They do. Yeah. Like a solid drone. That's, I, that's mostly what I fly. So, so are you going to go back into it? Are you going to go back into making your videos? I am. Um, so one of the things that kind of drives me is the B roll mm -hmm. for the, for the vlogging. Um, and to do the B roll, uh, is fun, you know, because you're not the B roll stuff's the cool stuff. Um, and I mean, you can't just show people B roll stuff the whole time. So you, you do have to have some actual information there that is tangible. People can use, mm -hmm. um, other than just shitting on something. But one of the things that drives me is music. Uh, so I, I recently re-upped my subscription to Artlist, which oh, nice. I, I highly recommend. Like if you're a creator and, mm -hmm. and um, you kind of don't know why you exist for certain things, get on an art list, you know, unlicensed music, um, hmm. and basically sit down and roll through their catalog and mm -hmm. like find what moves you emotionally. Mm-hmm build around it. Mm -hmm. Like if you look back at a lot of the B-roll stuff that I was incorporating in my videos, you, you'll, you'll probably see that. You'll probably see like, oh yeah, that's like, I can see like this cool beat. Mm -hmm. Like it made sense, you know? Um, but now I'm, I'm starting to discover things that kind of like tap into that Vegas nerve a little bit more, right? Mm -hmm. Like they, they kind of pull you, I'll, I'll play a sample for you when we're done. And, okay. and of the one that like I've, I, I've scripted out. Cause I mean, I work professionally in film, so, mm -hmm. you know, I, I wasn't operating the camera, mm -hmm. but I understand the gist of how things could move and flow. And I mean, I'm just like everyone else. I'm a consume, a, a connoisseur of, of entertainment. Mm -hmm. Like everyone says like, oh, I don't know anything about film or TV production. It's like, but you do. You, you know more than you think. You know more yeah. than you think. Like mm -hmm. you, you see stuff and you're like, I like that. And it's like, well, we'll break down why you like it. Like, mm -hmm. is it the movement? Like, um, a, a prime example of, of this is, uh, I recently started watching that show, the last of us. Yeah. Have, have you started oh, that? Mm -hmm. So, so in the, in the first episode, there's no score, there's no soundtrack that moves it, but mm -hmm. you're, it's gripping. And you know, if you analyze that, you go, why is it gripping? It's well, because it's it, they're laying the groundwork for this story. Right. Mm -hmm. But then you, um, then you watch shows uh, like Tron, Tron, you know, 2.0, right? Mm -hmm. Disney comes in and they, re, they, they redo Tron or they make the sequel. Like Tron Legacy? Yeah, Tron mm -hmm. Legacy, right? Um, so Daft Punk does the score for that. Hmm. And when you watch that movie, you're like, you know, it's got this really awesome score that moves it. Mm -hmm. You know, like, uh, it's like watching Christ a Christopher Nolan film, you know, the, like the dark Knight. Mm. you know, you've got Hans Zimmer who's mm -hmm. orchestrating all this beautiful music. And if you watched it without that music, you wouldn't think the same. Right. Right. Um, so it's interesting that you can see something like the last of us that has no, no score moving it, but mm -hmm. then you, you know, and it works, but then you have something like, uh, Christopher Nolan film, like dark Knight. It's an absolute necessity. You'd have to have it yeah. or else everything would feel flat and mm -hmm. feel dead. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that's been driving me to get back into vlogging is I found some music that I really, really like. I've pieced together some shots. Uh, I script out everything I do, no matter mm -hmm. how short it is. I write a little script. I use this app called uh, uh, Untitled hmm. and it allows me to do a proper script format. Mm-hmm which really helps in terms of just, um, you know, if you can't draw, if you can't storyboard, cause storyboarding is the first best thing. Mm -hmm. If you can't storyboard, um, then you can script it out mm -hmm. and it at least gives you a primer to know like why you're putting the camera somewhere or why you're moving the camera in a particular fashion or what it is that you're trying to cut to or segue into. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's, that's slowly pushing me back into the, the, the vlogging experience. So now it's just a matter of waiting for the snow to melt. So yeah. I can, you know, get started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I was going to start with the wild horses, um, the other day mm -hmm. and, you know, I ended up just getting stuck and I was like, maybe I'll do a vlog, start this, you know, while I'm stuck here. Cause this mm -hmm. would be a, it, it would have been a great tutorial, 
on how to get out of that particular situation. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I actually wanted to talk about was, was health. Um, because I was in the middle of nowhere. Um, I was stuck mm. and, uh, you know, I'm healthy, but for a brief moment, mm -hmm. the first time I had the thought, like, what if something happened to me right now? Um, which is why I always go really prepared. And like I mentioned earlier, I carry traction spikes with me because I'm right. in the snow. What if I slipped in the snow and like hit my head? You know, it's like being in oh, a, yeah, yeah. you know, you, you see people that get into the water and they're like, they have no life vest. They're mm -hmm. paddle boarding and you're like, but if the wind blows you off your board and you whack your head on something or you swallow water, yeah, what keeps you afloat, right? right. So micro storm, there's so many things that can happen. Yeah. You know, but, but I ended up foregoing the vlogging in that situation because it was so windy. I mean, 35, 35 mile an hour winds coming through, um, 17 degree mm. weather. Mm -hmm. Like at that point, it's just, uh, it would have, it would have made for great content because yeah. it would have shown the rawness of me trying to be in that particular element to get this particular shot, which I was able to get with the cows. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there weren't wild horses out there, but. There were there were cows that I was able to recreate the shot with that I wanted to get with the horses. Um, but your digits just don't work when you know mm -hmm. you, you don't have those when fine motor cold. skills. <laughs> yeah, and you know uh, I just I, I was like, all right, well we'll just you know don't worry about it. You know, come out here for the original intent. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick it back up. Nice. Yeah. I look yeah. forward to I look forward to seeing them. Good. So I think that'll be a good good thing. I think other people like it too. So let's uh let's finish this one up, right? Yeah. We, this is almost two hours. Yeah. So you, you just go. You yeah. Know? It you just know, happens. You just well, go. I've got to I've got to head out of here after this. I won't have time for the the new Atlantis because oh, I got to get back. Um, but I I can come back for that. Okay. Yeah. Besides, I, I'm pretty sure I just ran my mouth a lot. <laughs> so so I'm gonna listen to this when it comes out if it's publishable, and I'll be like, okay, don't do those things. <laughs> Oh yeah. No, this is, this is, this was one was good. This was just fine. So yeah, let's plan another one. Um, the other one got two podcasts. So this was, it started to bleed into it. Yeah. So yeah, I, I was going to say we could just do like a, Hey, thanks for watching everybody. And yeah. Yeah. And then we can just call this the new Atlantis. Yeah. Just keep going. Like, when do you got to take off? Uh, in about 10 minutes, I gotta be, oh, back by so one. you gotta split. Yeah. yeah. There's so much to talk about. Dude, there is. We didn't yeah. really get into Hollywood stuff. No. The business side of Hollywood. Yeah. I feel like we failed. <laughs> <laughs> feel like, it's like, I have this story about when I went to LA and, uh, I had just moved and it was like 4 AM and my neighbor knocked on my door, Kenny uh -huh. and, uh, he was like, he's a gaffer for film. He had done like uh, Underworld and some other stuff. And he said he needed help holding the light on this one film. And it ended up being a porno. <laughs> no, you you told me that story. I told you. And, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know if that's something I talk about on a podcast. Um, oh, no, these are all great stories. Yeah. But yeah, we didn't get into any of that. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll have to. Yeah. I, I need. Yeah. We should. We should like kind of loosely lay out the groundwork of what we want to talk about next time okay well, we can do that we yeah. can do that because i'm five got, minutes from now yeah i've got some good stories like uh getting no almost knocked out by michael imperioli which he's in the white lotus you know it's a big tv show going yeah on yeah now. i mean he was in sopranos um yeah kyle chandler almost knocking mm -hmm. out well he did knock out my teeth they were yeah. they were already out though they were fake they were they were yeah they were yeah what do you call them? Uh, Are they the provi caps or pro something? Provisionals. provisionals. So I was getting all crowns done. Yeah. Um, he didn't mean Here's to. the thing. So when you watch that footage, was that the butt of a gun that he hit yeah. you with? It was. Yeah. Yeah. And he actually hit you. Yeah. Because it looks painful. Yeah. If was. you watch that <laughs> shot, like it looks real. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, you're like, it, I've, I've freeze framed it just, yeah. just for my own self entertainment. Freeze frame, like your face right before because you're going like this yeah you were like oh you saw it coming yeah and it it's just like i oh i couldn't it looks so real so because it, it was real because it, it was real and the thing that you can't <laughs> pick up from that is um so the 
the biggest issue with working in film uh, and having people in charge of wardrobe for you yeah, is you're doing your job, which is stunts, and they're doing their job, which is wardrobe. Yeah. Um, and sometimes the wardrobe department listens and sometimes they don't. And where they didn't listen in this particular case is we're, we're working on a linoleum kind of mm -hmm. floor. Yeah. Um, he was wearing moccasins or something. Yeah. Right? That's what it was. He was like in leather sole shoes. I'm in leather sole shoes. Uh huh. And we, neither one of us have traction. So like I'm supposed to actually take a little bit of a step back before that hit. Yeah. And he's supposed to take just a little bit of a step forward. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we both did. And you both slid. But basically. we both slid. And and <laughs> my issue was I wasn't getting traction going backwards and he was getting a little bit too much going forwards and he couldn't stop himself. Yeah. And so my face stopped him. <laughs> um, yeah, that was. If anyone's wondering, this is in the movie Super 8, okay? Yeah. Which was still one of my favorite films, oh, by the way. It's a great awesome film. Awesome film. Yeah, if you love Stranger Things. Yeah, um, Super 8's right in there. God, yeah. Spielberg, J.J. Abrams mix. I mean, yeah. that was such a good team up. It's it's like got that Goonies feel to it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean J.J. Abrams, he, he definitely you know knocked it out of the park. He did, and he gave me a huge I love that film. Huge close up in that. He did. He didn't have to, but yeah, you, you get know. to see kid with he's shaved. Yeah, he's he's all clean shaven and stuff. You you I look like a baby. Few years younger too. That yeah. was that was a little well. That was like two thousand eight, wasn't it? When that came out? Yeah, uh, I want to say no, no, no. Or was it? That was 2013. Was it 13? 2013. Okay. Yeah. Time's messing me. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, that's a good one. Watch the movie. You'll, you'll get to see him for a split second and then he gets hit with the butt of a gun. Yeah. Yeah. So we, spoiler I mean, we had, alert. Yeah. We had some cool stuff in there and, 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 uh, a lot of, like, a lot of really neat action. Um, but yeah, Kyle was definitely one of those actors it was just kind of like really pleasurable to work with. Was like, he? Yeah. Afterwards, you know, he's like, let's go to the bar, you know, have a beer. He's normal. He's normal. Um, yeah. Cause you know, a, a lot of people forget when they talk about actors and hearing about actors they are like, Oh, I heard that guy's a dick or whatever. And it's like, well, who said that? You know, mm -hmm. uh, Oh, my buddy. And he tried to talk to him. Was he in the middle of fucking eating dinner? <laughs> Was he in the yeah yeah um, like like val kilmer yeah. i've heard stories about him being a jerk but it, it's yeah. like he's eating food somebody's walking up and asks for an autograph it's like let the guy eat well plus you don't know the hangry happens yeah hang, hangry can happen but <laughs> you, you also don't like someone's personal life or health history like uh Crohn, yeah. crohn's disease i don't have it i know some people that do and mm -hmm. I, I know that extremely um, painful yeah very painful like you just kind of you know can be Crunk, grumpy grumpy mm -hmm. because you just feel uncomfortable yeah, a lot yeah your butthole's a little upset yeah. mm -hmm. and so I, i'd hate to be like on the street like i i could never deal with fame honestly i i oh yeah yeah it's it's you've got to have the right personality to yeah. accept all that because it's like that's great that they have money and stuff yeah but then your life is not private yeah and it's just like welcome to not having a private life anymore and you've got to accept the reality that when people are going to see you, a lot of people are going to look at you and they're going to be like, oh, and they're going to be tripping out on yeah. you. And you're just a dude. You're well, just, you're just you walking down the street. Well, just imagine being famous and like not knowing why someone famous would want to do this, but like, let's just say you're famous and, uh, you want to post in one of the groups cause you like to be an off-road enthusiast and you're trying to learn something and yeah. people are like, don't you have enough money to just pay someone to know this or do this for yeah. you or whatever? And you're like, fuck, I just can't get an answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you, and you're going to get roasted. You're going to get eviscerated. But, but, uh, yeah, there's a lot of really humble, mm. humble actors out there to work with. Um, Richard Riley, it was a lot of fun to work with. Mm. Um, he's that jump to conclusions guy in office space. Oh, okay. you know, he makes the mat, you know, it's a jump to conclusions mat, you know, it's a game that, you know, uh, that he wants to sell <laughs> and he ends up getting hit by like a truck or something in the movie. Um, there's some, there's some A-listers out there that I've seen that happen with, um, that, uh, yeah, you just, you look at the landscape of social media today and, and you're like, how does that still happen? And how is it not, you know, being put in the public broadcast eye? heavily? 
Well, just because of the things that you do see make the media, and mm -hmm. and then you think about the things that don't, you're mm -hmm. just like, man, the things that they choose to like uh, sensationalize, mm -hmm. you know, in the media, and then the things that they choose not to. And I, I think it really just comes down to who has a really good publicist, because mm. a lot of that stuff has get kind of swept under the rug. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of bad habits, bad behavior. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of a lot of good good behavior out there too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because and this is the thing about working on because I, I did a lot of lower budget films. Um, you know, you get kind of a couple different mixes of celebrities that you work with in that. You get the ones that have done like some really really big notable things, and they're just kind of still humble. Um, but then you get some that have done like some notable things, but they're not really famous, but then they want to cling to it. So they're, mm. they're kind of a little bit more dickish, more so mm -hmm. than the ones that have kind of like run the gamut and learned how to be a professional. Mm -hmm. Cause that's the thing is this, you're still working on a professional, uh, film in a professional environment. Um, but you get the ones that, you know, are just happy to be there really famous and, uh, they just, they want to get along with everyone. They don't have any reason to not, you know, be cordial mm -hmm. and it's, and it's cool. Mm -hmm. But then you get the ones that, uh, yeah, they, um, they won't even shake your hand when you're, you know, you're trying to tie them in and keep them from falling off a roof mm. and, and you're just trying to like, you know, let them know who you are, mm -hmm. why you're there. And you, and you want to kind of like, if you're, you know, because with the like stunt rigging, if your job is safety of the actor. You want to look into their eyes and make sure they uh, understand. Do you understand <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, are you hot? You know, like shit like that. Like I remember working with a uh, Burn Gorman, um, that dude. Uh, I worked with him on the show I was coordinating called Turn for AMC. Mm -hmm. um, he's been in like Dark Knight, a bunch of other stuff. He's a uh, super like m kind of method actor. Mm. Um, we were doing this thing with some canon stuff and. Basically, he was trying to make sure that he didn't step in front of the fucking cannon. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if there's a ball in there or not. There's still, there's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's yeah. still like two pounds of gunpowder that's going in there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, he just didn't want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> fucking step on out there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Let insurance clean it up. Uh, no, I mean, I, I, I joke like that, but at the same time, I mean, that was a real situation. But, but um, I would never let someone, you know, go that far i mean i know i can and i have to I have to say this to make sure people aren't like well that's not very professional that's my inner dialogue yeah. saying fuck you step in. <laughs> my my on set uh safety self is sitting there going um and this is where i would get confrontational with certain people that i work with um i would like grab them by the shoulders like are you painted like i don't care if you don't like me or not mm -hmm. i'm doing my job I can throw the brakes on this whole thing. You know, right? It could be a multi-million dollar production. I got that say so. Mm -hmm. Right. Me and the first AD. Which which you think about something like that rust situation, which is yeah. like very public right now. Mm -hmm. Um, like I'm the safety officer, the first AD is the safety officer, mm -hmm. right? And kind of everyone is. But yeah. I mean it's it's within our power to be like, doesn't go forward. Mm -hmm. Like this doesn't move forward. Right. So unless that person I know is listening, you know, if there's injury, risk of injury or death, you know, I'm throwing the brakes on. Right. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it feels good to know that, like, you know, I did my job throughout the course of my career and no one got injured mm -hmm. um, and got some cool stories out of it. <laughs> yeah. Which we need to talk more about. Yeah. That's going to be important. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we'll schedule another one. This has been a great talk, though. Good. So, Good. yeah, I'm it's, sure. I'm sure people. I'll, I'll let you listen to it, and you can be like, "Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably hate it." Um, but I mean, if anything, it gave us a chance to catch up. It did. I, I mean, we haven't seen each other in person. It's been years. Has it? Has it been years? Last time we saw each other was we talked about doing um, a video for Maria Montessori Academy. Yeah, just a promo oh, video. Yeah, we want. That was right before COVID. Mm -hmm. We walked through the school mm -hmm. that ultimately a month later got shut down because of COVID. Mm -hmm. Well, the whole the, the whole, whole country everything did, did. Mm -hmm. world. But yeah, we I remember we we walked through and we were like, "This is all so cool. This is neat. We're gonna make something mm -hmm. useful out of this." And you know, we've got gear 
and uh yeah just didn't see that coming yep just got canceled yeah. yep yeah covid man well it's it's good because it's time to start picking up where we left off even though it feels like we lost i don't know how many years that was what yeah. three 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 or four three. years that's a good something like years. that three years yeah. lost three years of time but um we're back at it right yeah let's pick it up you're gonna make awesome videos yes that we can all watch yes that's that is the one promise i made on the youtube channel is what that, is your youtube channel uh it's just kid richmond just kid, kid richmond yeah, yeah um, instagram's kid richmond yeah too. Every, everything's kid richmond mm -hmm. passwords kid richmond <laughs> um <laughs> so, so uh i made a promise to everyone in the in one of my videos i said i'm not gonna make content that sucks mm -hmm. and uh I guess people don't realize that that also meant that I just wouldn't make content if I felt it was going to suck. So mm -hmm. that's why I haven't made any videos. Mm. Um, but got some new stuff that I'll put in the works. And I, I do greatly appreciate you sitting down and spending time with me. Oh, um, yeah. No. Thanks yeah. for hopping on, too. Yeah. Gives me some content. Good conversations. Yeah. We've got to do the new Atlantis for sure. This is the Expedition One podcast, of course, for for my Expedition One people, customers, and yeah. Whoever wants to listen to off road content, a lot of it was. Yeah. So, um, Kid Richmond shits on everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's the subtitle of yes. this one. Okay. So, well, awesome, man. This has been good. So, cool. let's do more. Everybody, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Excellent.